Dear viewers, welcome from Mirpur Shere Bangla National Cricket Stadium. This is Australia versus Bangladesh. Mighty Australia for the first time in Bangladesh. And first bilateral series between Bangladesh and Australia. Good morning to all of you. Welcoming you, Mahfuz Alam. And along with me, this is Ahmed bin Purvis. Good morning, and I think you're really fine today. Thank you very much, Mahfuz. Yes, uh, thought of a more sunlit day, but there are cloud covers, and it is definitely a historic moment, especially for the Bangladesh women who are going against Australia for the first time in a bilateral white ball series. And uh, this series has already got a lot of hype, a lot of attention, and uh, we've already seen the both teams really prepared for this series and Australia bringing in most probably their strongest lineup to face Bangladesh. It's going to be a very different challenge for them coming into the subcontinent and especially for a few of the Australian players who've been here 10 years ago. They played here in the 2014 T20 World Cup and they won that. So they have got good memories from Mirpur, the Bangladesh women riding on their recent form, would really want to stamp their authority and create new memories of their own Mahfuz. Yes, definitely, no doubt. And uh, we have uh, seen the wicket earlier. And uh, as you have mentioned, sort of overcast condition today, and it rained, there is a bit of moisture on the wicket. So if we consider first five or ten overs, there will be some movement for the paces and uh, with the time there will be something for the spinners as well as cracks are there and uh, there are possibilities you know for the spinners I mean the ball will keep low well just the itinerary of the series overall, Australia versus Bangladesh women, the first ODI being held here at Mirpur Sher Bangladesh Cricket Stadium. Second match would be on the 24th of March and the third and final ODI of the series would be held on the 27th of March, all at the home of cricket here in Dhaka. Australians, they've initially brought in a squad of 14 players and interestingly 10 out of them just recently came from India. They were playing at the women's IPL and they've got a little bit of experience playing in the subcontinent in recent times. So it's going to be a very interesting battle overall. Both sides facing each other just once in the ODI history. That was back in 2022 when Bangladesh faced off against Australia in a group stage match in Wellington. That was also a very overcast day and interestingly that match was rain affected but Bangladesh put up a good fight against Australia in that game ultimately losing that by five wickets so that's just the only instance these two teams played against each other but looking at the squads that were declared for this series quite a few of them have met each other a couple of years back in the World Cup bout definitely a very good moment for Tim Bangladesh they will be always looking for, you know, playing against the sort of big teams like Australia, the mighty Australia, who won seven titles in ODI World Cup. They are the record champions. Eagerly waiting for the match to begin. So now it's time for the pitch report. Going off to Shanur, who's there at the center. So pitch report time for the all-important first one day international between Bangladesh and Australia women's team. Now in Mirpur's Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium, the home of cricket in Bangladesh, the pitches generally tend to be a bit slow and slow and tend to really help the spinners. 
Now for Bangladesh, we know that's one of their strengths. They have a barrage or a myriad of spinners and they will come into play as this match progresses. We look at the surface, you take a look, there are slight cracks on both ends, but not too many. And there's a bit of a grass covering. The color of the soil, the surface color, it's very similar to what we generally see in Mirpur. And this tells me that this is a very typical Mirpur wicket that will make it difficult for the Australian batters to really get set and try and build partnerships because this will be slightly different conditions. This will be very different conditions. In fact, could you even call it alienish conditions for the Australian team that are coming to play here for the first time in a full bilateral series. So as you can see, the teams are getting ready. They are practicing and uh, they will know what sort of a pitch this is. I think uh, Bangladesh will be happy with getting a bit of home advantage against a very strong Australia team. What the captains decide to do after the toss is anyone's guess, but perhaps batting first might be the way to go as it's a day match. That was uh, Shanu Rabbani and uh, he was informing us regarding the wicket that we talked before. Now for the toss. We're live here from the pitch with the two captains and the match referee uh, to kick start the Australian Women's Tour of Bangladesh, first ever bilateral series, Nigar Sultana Jyoti, Bangladesh captain, along with Alisa Healy, Australian captain and master free Niamur Rashid Rahul, all in readiness for the toss. Uh, let's go for it, Jyoti. Heads is the call. <laughs> and uh, it is a tail. Yeah. So Bangladesh have won the toss. Uh, Jyoti, first and foremost, congratulations, you've won the toss and what would you do? Uh, we like to ball first because seeing the condition, we want to take the advantage of the morning. And uh, uh, we heard about a little bit rain yesterday, so. Mm -hmm. So y you prefer that you know you see the target and approach the innings accordingly. Yeah, the thing is, we're trying to prepare ourselves according to the uh, circumstances. Obviously, we're seeing their uh, strength and everything, and we have a very good bowling attack, and we wanted to go for that. You've had a fantastic past 12 months. Uh, you've won a few matches here, won a series, tied a series, and against some big guns. Another big gun at home. Uh, looking forward to you know make a statement. Yeah, you know, obviously the other thing is how we played for the last six months is uh, amazing, and uh, the girls are very excited to play against them because they are very uh, good side, and uh, there are a lot of learning side will will be upcoming, and we are looking forward for that. And looking at the pitch quickly, uh, what would you want to restrict the Australian side? That was from the toss, yeah, Bangladesh uh, won the toss and decided to bowl first according to the condition, so Bangladeshi bowlers, they will try to exploit the condition, no doubt, so and in the very first over, no surprise, the best weapon from Team Bangladesh, this is Marufa. So Bangladesh winning the toss, looking to make use of the wicket. First ball of the series, off goes Marufa, nicely driven, finds the gap right away, Australia off the mark, couple of runs to get the scoreboard rolling, start warming up, it's going to be a very interesting series overall, Australia coming in here with a two-pronged preparation, first of all they need those points, this ODI series is part of the ICC Women's Championship, where Australia is definitely leading right at the top. Bangladesh is in number seven with four wins. So they also have to make the maximum of this home series as well. Pull shot. And we'll get the first boundary. No chance for the fielder. Brilliant shot there. Alisa Healy definitely knows how to play on the back foot kind of wickets that the Australians are habituated to playing in. Just found that ball short of length, made use of that, swiveled around, played it fine. The fine leg fielder in the circle made best use of it, the Aussie captain. 
no doubt the legendary player from Australia 33 years of age excellent movement from Marufa good comeback into the block hole and that was a very good delivery six runs so far from first three deliveries and she's swinging the ball the very good and positive thing for Marufa that she is swinging the ball and she can she embarrass Alisa Haley well fended off that natural in swing from Marufa on show again Bangladesh winning the toss lifting to field first and We've heard from the Australian captain as well. They very well know about the spin prowess the Bangladeshis possess. Marufa, the only fast bowler in the side, trying to make use of early conditions. It's been, been a good start so far for Australia. Lisa Healy taking first strike, getting a few runs on the board, well fended off again. A little bit of bounce extracted. Played 12 matches so far, 10 wickets beside her name. 4 for 29 is her best, career best so far. And economy is 4.6. Not a bad for the pacer. Most famously, she was a player of the match in one of the ODIs against Eng uh, India, picking up four wickets last year. Really became a big star for Bangladesh. Oh, that was an opportunity right up there. The slowness of the wicket catching up. Alisa Healy popping that up. Played the shot too early. And the cotton ball chance fluffed in the end by Marufa as the over ends. It's 8 for none, Australia. So an early chance for Bangladesh, Marufa just not able to take that catch, second over from Sultana, the off spinner right away, gets some turn, oh is that a wicket, wow, first stop, first ball, Litchfield's gone, Bangladesh through Sultana gets the first breakthrough. Absolutely fantastic bowling from Sultana and uh, from the good length. There was a bit of turn and couldn't negotiate it properly. Litchfield, she is destructive. This is really important wicket for Bangladesh. It will motivate the team. They are happy. Litchfield, she is upset because couldn't negotiate it. And that was the very first delivery from Sultana. Phoebe Litchfield just not being able to negotiate the first delivery which was picture perfect just fell on the right spot turned just enough to beat the outside edge got the tip of the off stump what a dream start for sultana and for bangladesh creating a chance in the previous over but that was the big fish Alyssa healy she's still there now comes in with her torn off helmet ellis perry she's carried this all along her career but she really loves the helmet. She's kept this since the beginning of her international career, which has expanded beyond 300 matches over all Mahfuz. So one of the biggest stars in world cricket is on the wicket. And right now, this would be the bigger challenge for Bangladesh. No doubt. And uh, 
before the series, we thought that Bangladeshi players, they said that, okay, there are so many idols for them in this team. Very good line length, well negotiated, very much watchful after losing the first wicket. Litchfield, very much destructive player, had two centuries in ODA career. Nicely driven off. There are a couple of fielders. Would be cut off in the deep, but Perry gets off the mark right away. Bangladesh playing their second ever one day international against Australia. The only other time they met was in a World Cup bout a couple of years back in Wellington. A slip in for Sultana, got a dream start for herself. Gave the first breakthrough, a golden duck for Litchfield. Not a good start for her in the series. Nice defense. They will probably take some time to negotiate Sultana because she is having a very good line and length as well. Getting some turn. That's played safely, a bit aerial, but quite safe there from Elisa Healy. Gets herself another single. Brings back Perry on strike. Australia finding it challenging right at the top. Spin with the new ball is something new. Oh, that beats the outside edge. Pretty close there from Sultana. Brilliant over comes to an end. Marufa once again in swinging delivery and this time also very good length well negotiated gets a good start hitting the right spots there just back over length ball starting way outside off but she's got that natural swing that's coming in which Healy will have to be wary of created an opportunity in her very fast over so will there any other opportunity in this over? Once again, it's inside edge. But we'll get a single. Ritomoni down there at fine. That inside edge must give Marufa a bit of confidence. She knows it's important for her to try and get a breakthrough with the new ball. Elis Perry back on strike so it's 9 for 1 Australia into the third over Marufa is going with a sleep once again she's getting the movement and uh, this time couldn't create the gaps so dot once again Interesting field setup from Jyoti right at the top. She's keeping a lot of fielders in front of the wicket. And then short fine as well, covering up the deep square. Into the slot, opened the face of the bat, but mid off was there. This is another dot delivery from Marufa. 
Sun's peeping out through the clouds. Seen a murky morning turn out into a sunny day. Let's hope the weather stays put because the weather forecast doesn't look good. Trying her best to find the gap, but it's once again into the slot and in swinging delivery and couldn't manage it. So, Dot once again, that's really a moral victory for the bowler. Bowling excellent lines and channels, Marufa, just not giving any room to the batters. Ellis Perry, excellent outside the off, a little bit of room and she'll go for it. Hasn't found that so far. Player, no doubt. That's another good delivery from Marufa. And after three, it's nine for one. So the wicket taker coming in to bowl her second over, Sultana. She's been brilliant against India. She followed that up against the series when they played Pakistan just the in the end of last year. Sultana once again. I'll set off. So we talked earlier, Purvis, that cracks are there, but after a while, you know, it will be more helpful for the spinners. Face to love and delivery so far. Once again, it's Alisa Healy. She's looking good. Solid in her defense as usual. Still trying to assess the wicket, not going for big shots right away. It's a one day format game, so she's got a lot of time. Taking time. Trying to find the gap. But bowlers, they're having a very good line and length and keeping the batters, you know, within the shell. Ah, down the leg. There was Tarn, and it's a wide delivery. The first extra of the day. Australia moving into double digits. 10 for 1, lo losing Lichfield. For Golden Duck, that was a great start for Sultana in the previous over. Trying to still keep at it. She's still got a slip. There is mid-off. Two patrolling the covers within the 30-yard circle. That was outside edge. And was a chance for Bangladesh. Missed it. Chasing it. Saved the boundary. But there was absolutely a clear chance for Bangladesh. Brilliant delivery once again, beating Healy outside the off stump. And that's why you would want to keep a slip. Sultana can keep the ball both ways. Beating Healy all ends up. And uh, that was a wrong, wrong one from uh, Sultana. And that was turning away. That's why the batter, she was a bit confused. Got the edge, was opportunity, but missed it. And after that, got the single. Lucky break for Australia. A couple of chances not being taken up by Bangladesh. Fahima in the first slip just missed that opportunity. It was athletic fielding from Marufa, by the way, she saved a run for her side. Last delivery of the over. So back foot punch will get a single. And with that, it's 15 for one after four.
So Bangladesh making a good start after four. Australia going at less than four and over, losing their opener. The captain, Alisa Healy, is still there, accompanied by another iconic cricketer in modern day women's cricket, Elise Perry. She has a very unique talent. We know that she also played for Australia women's national soccer team. Now she's got more than 300 matches under her belt in the international cricket. The excellent delivery from Marufa from the very first over. She's, you know, delivering excellently good line length, getting in swing. And that is not that much easier for the batter to negotiate, to create the gap and to find the boundaries or to lick the runs. An important spell for Marufa with the new ball. Jyoti will try to get a couple of more overs from her while the ball is still new, the wicket is still fresh. Once again, that's amazing delivery. It's getting in swinging Yoka and played very nicely, watchfully. It is Perry we're talking about, the only female cricketer who played both cricket and football World Cup for Team Australia. Marufa, on the other hand, got into ascendancy, especially after her performances in the last T20 World Cup. She's been coming up from the under-19s doing really well, has been one of the bigger stars for Bangladesh, especially after a few of their fast bowlers, Jahanar and others, are not being picked in the side. Marufa has been the lone fast bowler for the Tigresses the last couple of years at least, and she's looking to improve on her already good repertoire trying to get some more variations in her bowling, trying to get faster as well. Feature from Marufa is consistency to a length. Look at this, that was I was talking about, that is that she will not get in run, but Marufa is trying to hit in a certain spot and getting swing from there. And after that also we are seeing some ver some sort of variations like Yorka, she tried Yorka twice or thrice. So it's not been that much easier for these two legendary players, though they are there, but it's not that much easier to negotiate Marufa or to, you know, hit fours or six as usual what we see from these two batters. Absolutely. The Australians having to bat first after losing the toss. And interestingly, here at Mirpur, Bangladesh played six matches last year, three against India, three against Pakistan in the ODI format. And if you look at the average score in the first innings, hasn't been a lot actually, it's just 170. And the team batting second, the second innings average score is around 140. So we can see why Nigar Sultana Jyoti, after winning the toss, was talking about trying to restrict Australia below a score of 200. Even that could be very competitive. Yeah, definitely. And they have done it. They have done their job at the very second over, taking the wicket of Lichfield. So pressure is there. Marufa still trying for a wicket. That was also nice. Didn't play convincingly. That was from the edge. We'll get a single to finish this over. After five, it's 16 for one. Definitely, it will be Sultana once again. She took the wicket of Lichfield from her very first delivery in this innings. And that was a superb delivery. 
for Litchfield. Bit of short delivery, back foot pull, nicely punched, and it's a boundary. Welcome boundary for Team Australia. That is the power of the Aussies. Captain Alyssa Healy launching on that. Just rocked onto the back foot, was waiting for something short, and it was quite short from Sultana. Got the treatment. This is the first time that we have seen Sultana bowled very short. And uh, she was trying to get that opportunity. She was waiting for a loose delivery. And she got it and punished it. And look at that. Excellent comeback. And that's also a respect from the batter after punishing a bad delivery. She welcomed the good one. Interesting comeback from Sultana. Went back full. She knows where to bowl at, especially in Mirpur. Again, Jyoti is still keeping the slip on. It would be important for Bangladesh to pick away at the Australian top order. Got five centuries and 1750s beside her name, Lisa Healy. Destructive batter, highest 170 in her career. So front foot flick. She will get a single. 21 for one. This is the sixth over. Sultana is the only bowler who got the wicket on her first over. Using the crease, going back and trying to play with roll of the wrist and finding the gaps, but it's, it was a very good delivery from Sultana. Adjusted the length whenever she saw that the batter went back to adjust the length. Once again, outside, outside edge. edge. That should be out. Finger goes up. Another wicket for Bangladesh. <laughs> that is really excellent. Excellent delivery. Second wicket down. Ellis Perry gone. A big, big blow for Australia. And what a bowling effort from Sultana right away with the new ball. The persistence from Jyoti to keep the slip on worked out beautifully. Ellis Perry, I'm sure wanted to have a longer stay at the crease this is a long series three odis followed by the three t20s but she has disappointed right at the top but you always have to give credit to the bowler sultana again with that ball straightening up she wanted to go gung-ho through the leg side there was a very thick outside edge but what a catch it deflected off jyoti's gloves and then it was Fahima taking the catch. Look at that celebration. Marufa, once again, with her excellent spot and line as well. Exploiting the condition from her very first over and didn't give that much room to the batters to open their arms. It's a very interesting start from Bangladesh, using pace from one end and spin from the other with seen in the shorter format Nahida also coming up to bowl with the new ball but this time Jyoti wanted a mix of Marufa and Sultana from both ends another fantastic player Beth Mooney with Elisa Healy this is the seventh over 
fourth for Marufa. She started. Considered just eight runs so far, but created opportunity pressure to the batters. And we were talking about the wickets, the two wicket Bangladesh purchased. That is sort of a result of you know creating pressure with the dot deliveries, not giving that room, not giving loose deliveries to open the arms from the batters. Credit goes to these two bowlers who started really well. Definitely a very good pairing, as we mentioned previously. Bowling also comes in pairs. Marufa has been very economical and. On the other side, we've seen Sultana backing up the wickets. Beaten outside off. A brilliant delivery there. This one swung the other way. Marufa learning her trade. Testing Alyssa Healy outside off. That was a sight in itself. And this is very nice to see Marufa. She's trying something different. Was going with in-swinging deliveries with, uh, you know, consistently with a spot that, was, that she was trying to maintain. But after that... She tried something different and she waited for the batter to anticipate. It was once again a pace inside out shot, but this time, no mistake, it's a boundary. Fantastic blow from Elisa Healy. Just found the width she needed, went for the big drive in the previous ball, but this time round ball had a little bit of height and she made use of it no intentions of keeping it down went over the infield Lisa Healy looking dangerous as the match goes on Marufa she'll have to come back it was into the slot no movement that was easy picking shot for Alisa Healy once again into the stump but it was into the slot and played it very easily after seven is 26 for two So seven overs done and dusted and the eighth over begins again continuation with spin but there is a slight change in voice change in commentary i'm shanu rabani good morning and welcome wherever you may be watching us from on t sports and also on the bangladesh cricket team's youtube channel the official youtube channel and i'm joined by shamonnoy ghosh a very good morning to you shamonnoy Bangladesh off to a decent start in this first of uh, three match ODI series. Very good morning, Shanur. It's, it's, it's actually a very good start from Bangladesh's perspective. They managed to take two early wickets, courtesy of Sultana Khatun. And again, persisting with that line, testing the patience of the batters, and uh, kudos to Nigar Sultana Jyoti for persisting with the slip yeah absolutely some attacking mindset from the Bangladesh captain trying to make use of the early overcast conditions though there is a bit more sunshine out there at the moment another single there Elisa Healy looking to get set the Australian captain Beth Mooney back on strike Australia moving on to 27 for 2 this is the first run of this over. Sultana, she's been the pick of the bowlers. Marufa's had her moments as well. Perhaps some better fielding would have resulted in wickets for her. But she's one to watch out for. One of the fastest rising bowlers in Bangladesh 
at the moment. And we could also see in world cricket, in women's cricket, Marufa has been one to watch out for. She's been doing it home and away. We see the slip still there, obviously for the new batter. And a tight offside field results in no run of the final, in fact, uh, the penultimate ball of the over. One ball remaining. Three on the off, three on the on side, all inside the field along with the slip. And a dot to finish things off. A tidy over by Sultana. Four overs, she's done with two for 14. Australia, 27 for two. So we were talking about Marufa and she continues now. Another good delivery. Another dot ball, Elisa Healy. She seems to be getting set though, Shaman Nai. Yes, certainly, with uh, all her experience. and She's been there for 33 deliveries. Uh, not out at 24 now, 36 deliveries. So certainly, uh, she is well in and Australia will be banking on their skipper to make it count to carry on I think uh, something they're worried about perhaps the bowlers uh, landing mark Nigar Sultana Jyoti along with Murshida giving company to Maru Faktar Gazi Zohel perhaps not happy maybe she crossed over to that uh, danger zone Perhaps a warning from uh, the on-field umpire, Ghazi Sohel. Yeah, absolutely. They've got to be careful with these things. Perhaps a hint of nerves as well from the hosts taking on such a massive opposition. And this is the first time Australia are in Bangladesh for a full bilateral series. Another good delivery. Carefully watched by Lisa Healy. Slight movement still at the moment. Still the first power play. And she gets that gets that swing naturally, Marufa, with the new ball. Gets the ball to come back to the right handed batter. Marufa Akhtar. As it is coming back inside towards the right handed batter, the protection in this first power play for her is long off and deep mid wicket, the two fielders guard guarding the boundaries on the on side. Another good delivery by Marufa, maintaining a tight channel outside off on that fourth and fifth stump corridor, making sure the batter needs to work to score those runs. With that, Shanur, I think the length is the key. The mid-wicket fielder is inside the circle. So if she's guilty of a tad bit short, Alisa Healy can... Uh, just pull it away. And there is that one fielder. Oh, now that's an appeal and she's given. Massive wicket for Bangladesh. It's the big fish. The Australian captain, Elisa Healy. She has to depart. She took the outside edge. And she's gone for 24 from 39 deliveries. Marufa, we were talking about her. Being a bit unlucky. And she gets the important breakthrough. We were speaking of the length that Marufa is bowling. Again, credit to her. She's been persistent, consistent with the length. We talked if she was guilty of 
banging it short she'll be pulled away but she was right on the money in terms of length and in that corridor right outside the off stump just inviting alisa healy the set batter with all her experience to come draw forward and play that drive and in the process inducing that outside edge and formalities really for the bangladesh skipper to get rid of the aussie skipper here's the wicket again here's that line the tempting the batter and again it, we we often mention bowling in tandem she was going for the drive she was not to the pitch of the ball draw it forward is the length is the length perfect and he she gets her first wicket does maruf akhtar thoroughly deserves that wicket she had a few chances early on and when you look at how healy's been set up in this over they've been telling her to drive outside off to drive outside off the first three deliveries she gave it with but that fourth and fifth stump channel and eventually marufa gets the breakthrough reaps the rewards of bowling a good line the new batter talia magra immediately gets off the mark nicely tucked away on the leg side beth muni yet to score a run australia right now stuttering a bit 28 for 3 you just mentioned bowling in tandem the reason i say that marufa she's only given away 14 runs just one more delivery to go to get to the completion of her fifth over sultana khatun has taken two wickets but also has been very very economical two for 14 off her four overs so they've kept it very tight for the Aussie batters and in the process you know that's why Elisa Healy had to go for that pressure release shot it's tempted to go for that drive good move by Jyoti by keeping the slip Yamarfa to finish the over driven and a quick single taken there's a lot of enthusiasm from the Bangladeshi fielders at the moment We're done with nine overs. Australia, twenty-nine for three. So Sultana to continue with the one slip. A very good delivery to start things off. Bangladesh piling on the pressure. Two new batters in the crease. And three top batters sent back to the dugout. Talia Magra along with Beth Mooney. Now given a bit of width but So many fielders on the offside, three in fact inside the circle. One of them definitely gets it. So as we can see three on the offside, three on the onside inside the circle. You have the slip and the rest of the fielders, one deep mid wicket and one wideish long off outside as Sultana continues another good delivery. So a lot of pressure being put on here by the Bangladesh bowlers right now on the Australian batters. Magrain Mooney they might have some rebuilding to do again this one keeps slow as i said in the pitch report that this pitch might just stay a bit on the lowish side and we can see signs of that already it was actually the slider from sultana khatun this one came back into the left handed batter the previous two deliveries were she used the turn the purchase of the wicket turned away from the left handed beth mooney Sultana oh, oh there it is she darted this one in darted this one in and that's what this does in the process is these dot balls 
you know, they, they managed to take two singles in the previous over, Shanur. That's, that's the name of the game for them now, to, take, to rotate the strike. They've got a left-hander, a right-hander in the middle at the moment. But Bangladesh not allowing that. Absolutely. Five dot balls in the last one, almost bringing about the fourth wicket for Bangladesh. As Sultana looks forward to getting a maiden. Again, given a lot of flight on the onside. And this time, finally, she's off the mark with a single. And after 10 overs, Australia are 30 for 3. The Tigresses are roaring here at the Sher Bangla, the home of cricket in Bangladesh. Australia, 30 for 3, with Marufa continuing the 11th over and gets it on the money immediately against Beth Mooney. The Aussies have been pegged back after Bangladesh captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti won the toss and chose to field first. Proving to be a very good decision so far at least persisting continuing with the two opening bowlers slip given to Marufa yeah widish first slip in fact and again this time a bit fuller slightly going down leg but the batter can't make use of it there is a lot of space on that leg side Lots of room to play shots across a deep square leg and a deep backward square leg, in fact, in place. Oh, now that was very close to taking the bottom edge. Again, Marufa mixing it up, getting the batters, playing and missing. The ball tipped right in front of the wicketkeeper. Jyoti actually did well to keep her body behind it. Now she gets rid of the slip. It's moving uh, Fahima Khatun to mid-wicket. Beautifully bowled once again. Straight to the fielder at point. So another dot ball. Bangladesh continuing with the good work with the ball. As you mentioned, I think dot ball has done the trick. Bangladesh, you know, managed to take the first wicket, Sultana Khatun, in her very first over, which was the seventh delivery of the innings. Second wicket was Ellis Perry. First one was Phoebe, Phoebe Litchfield. Ellis Perry departed in the sixth over, the last delivery. And in the ninth over, it was Elisa Healy. Beautifully bold, very close to getting the batter either played on LBW or clean bold, but Marufa, she's pulled a magnificent over so far. Five dot balls in a row. He's certainly very well bowled, and I think this is a new skill that she has developed. We know that she gets the ball to come back into the right-handed batter. Now she's getting it to come back into the left-handed batter also. Of course, coming round the wicket, the angle helps. Imagine if she can Get it away from the right hand batter too. Always keep the batters in two minds, whether it's coming in or out. The conditions might be helping as well. This time it's driven. Finally a run of the final delivery in the over. Australia playing a pressure releasing shot after 11. They're 31 for 3. So the Bangladesh captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti so far 
relying on her two frontline bowlers as they've taken three wickets, Marufa Akhtar and Sultana Khatun. And it'll be Sultana to bowl her sixth over, full and straight on the money once again. Another dot ball from her. Again, some some swing also visible. Pulling at a very tight line, very tight line. Long off is there. Again, the Australian top order, very dangerous. They can carry on. If you've got the likes of the Litchfields and the Healy's and the Perry's back in the dugout, but you still have Beth Mooney in the middle, was part of the Australia squad in 2014 she won the World Cup, the final was in this ground and she's been in good touch, three consecutive 50s uh, for Gujarat Titans the Women's Premier League recently concluding one this is courtesy of uh, our uh, fellow commentator Ahmed bin Parvez so you never know with, with these batters and such a top class side just need one or two batter to click now reinforcements increased on the offside Again, a delivery that keeps a bit low, but the batter has ample time to play it off the back foot. The last delivery, you saw it almost getting stuck onto the surface, so it is one of those sticky and slowish, sluggish Mirpur surfaces where you're never really set. Another good delivery by Sultana, and she's continuing the good work with the ball along with Marufa. She's complementing the field. There is a deep mid wicket and long on. The two only fielders regarding the boundary. But there are four fielders and a slip on the offside. Ooh, now onto the pads, but no appeal. Perhaps going down leg side. Another dot ball, just the single of this over. Australia, 32 for 3 after 12. So as we see the batting scorecard here, Lisa Healy, the captain with the top score of 24. She got set, it seemed, but then got out. Phoebe Litchfield without scoring. She was gone, pulled by Sultana. And then Elise Perry, the experienced all-round player, the legendary icon of Australian cricket, also out after scoring just two runs. Talia McGrann uh, at the moment, Beth Mooney in the crease. Ashley Gardner still to come, another big-hitting player. Wonder if the conditions will be ideal for her when she comes on the bat. Right now we're seeing a bowling change. Nahid Akhtar, the ICC Women's Player of the year, uh, Month for November. Right now into the attack for Bangladesh. The slip remains. Her first delivery is driven and it'll be a single. This time for Beth Mooney. Australia moving on to 33 for 3. First change in bowling, Nahida, definitely prime bowler, premier bowler for Bangladesh. At least the opening bowlers have done their job, taken early wickets, three of them. Four on the offside for the right-handed Talia Magra. You were going, now the f it has uh, beaten the fielder, found the gap. And against adverse conditions, they found a boundary. And perhaps after quite a few overs as the two fielders run off. But Talia Magra has played it nicely for four runs. Yeah, it was a bit short. And just played along the ground. No need for any extra risk there. The outfield is very good here in Mirpur. Despite a sluggish surface. 
and Nahida. This is the first over. The batters definitely trying to take the attack to her. Mooney and Talia McGrath both on five at the moment. A much better delivery. Still a single. There are open spaces on the uh, offside and straight down the ground, Shamunai. Yeah, Talia McGrath seems to be in better control. Beth Mooney, she's been there for 19 deliveries. So it's fair to say that both the batters have uh, got their eyes in. She was the top run scorer against South Africa, Beth Mooney. The recent series when they hosted South Africa and Australia, of course, this year, earlier this year in February, scored 134 runs and two unbeaten match winning 50s, Beth Mooney. So both these batters equally can prove to be very, very crucial for Australia. Yeah, very damaging batters. They can do damage to the opposition. Another good delivery by Nahida. Her first few deliveries, perhaps not as tight. But after that, her fourth and fifth delivery, she's gotten her bearings correct. And right now, just making sure that the pressure is put back on to the visiting batters. Another good delivery, but a quick single. Very, very well done by the two batters. Very good understanding of where the field position was. She was a closing fielder right there at cover point. But nonetheless, a single taken. 39 for 3 Australia after 13. Sultana Khatun did the early damage with two wickets. One in her very first over. Second one of Ellis Perry in the sixth over. And then Maruf Akhtar getting rid of the set. Australian captain Alisa Healy. Bowled well. Both gave away only 16 runs. Brilliant economy. Nahida so far single overs but seven runs. And Rabia now coming in from the media end. That's what Bangladesh excels in. Spin. Nikajul Sultana Jyoti takes pride in that. And uh, not shy away from saying that uh, they've, they've got very good bowlers. With slip and plays. Nicely played off the back foot but straight to the fielder. Just one thing I want to bring this up with you, Shanur. Uh, apart from Alisa Healy, rest of the batters, particularly th the ones that have gone back, all out in single figures. It's so lack of partnerships. Now, this pair seems promising. They've been uh, getting hold of the ball and always looking to take a single. As of now, they're happy to just see it by. You're absolutely right. You need partnerships. We saw the partnerships with the Bangladesh opening bowlers. We saw them bowling well in tandem, complementing each other. And as Rabia continues, again, you see the lack of bounce. Another thing I wanted to mention, Shomunna, is that these two teams, the last team they faced was South Africa. Bangladesh last played against South Africa in South Africa, where they got their first ever win in an ODI and in a T20I international. And then Australia also played against South Africa at home, where South Africa won their first ever T20I and ODI against Australia. So very interesting uh, records being built here because of this ODI championship that the ICC have arranged. Another dot ball, another good over right now so far by Rabia. He was looking for the single, but Jyoti was quick to throw her gloves off and uh, off to the ball. Good that you mentioned the ICC Women's Championship and both the sides have played South Africa coming here to play this series and goes on to show why Australia women's cricket team is right at the top of the ICC Women's Championship, right at the top. But Bangladesh have an opportunity if they win, they can uh, get some more points and improve their position. It'll be tied with India, but net run rate will be a concern. That concludes the overs. Rabia Khan starts off with the maiden. Australia a 39 for three. There will be a change in comms and uh, Mahfuz and uh, Ahmed Vibhavrez will be joining again.
very good battle so far. Bangladesh making a very good start, justifying winning the toss and getting the bowlers get a first crack in this Mirpur wicket. The Australian top order finding it difficult to score at ease, losing the top three in the process. Captain Alisa Healy, Elise Perry, Leachfield all back in the hut. So another over begins. Slip is still there. Welcome, Mahfuz. Yeah, same here. And uh, definitely a very good start from Tigresses with the three wickets. Three experienced campaigners are gone, and uh, definitely a pressure for Team Australia. And they're trying to settle this partnership and trying to bigger this partnership as much as possible because they need just right now to stay on the wicket to get some runs, to have some very good partnership and maybe after settling down they will get the opportunity to make it bigger. Oh, this is actually one of the slowest knocks that Beth Mooney has played in a long time. We've seen her play so well against South Africa in the last ODI series. She plays at a high strike rate, especially in T20s. She opens the bat and a lot of times the way she bats She's famously also termed as the female version of David Warner. Right now she's trying to battle in the middle, trying to put some bit of experience into the middle order. 30-year-old Beth Mooney. Oh, that was a bit uppish. That was a good delivery. And uh, restricting the batters from playing big shots are really crucial right now for Bangladesh. Nahida with his skills and experience. 40 matches, 51 wickets beside her name, 5 for 21, best and 3.8 most importantly. Very nice economy. It means she can create pressure to the opponent. That's speed on the outside edge. Slight query from Jyoti. Hence the over Nahida, very strong over from her once again. After 15, it's 40 for 3. So Naida started her career when she was just 15 years old and gradually coming up the ranks right now is the vice captain of the Bangladesh side. It's the only women cricketer from Bangladesh to get the ICC Player of the Month award for November 2023. Sarabia so starts off with a wide. Bangladesh definitely boasts wide variety of spinners. There are wrist spinners in the side, more than one of them. 19 years of age, Rabia, and uh, already played 10 matches, 14 wickets, 3 for 29 is the best, bowling figure, and economy is 4. Outside of Stam, kept low. And didn't play this shot convincingly. And that's the thing that will make batters, you know, irritated. I mean, balls are going low and it will not be that much easier to play. <laughs> and that was the wrong one, defended it. She's got some variations and she's showed that quite a bit in her international career so far. Had a very good 2023 Just see when she releases, not like the typical wrist spinners, not twist her wrist that much, but goes with the, you know, leg spin. It's important to have accuracy, and that's what she has in abundance. Slight midfield, misfield gets McGraw another single. 
Talia McGraw, the vice captain of the Australian women's side, started her international career back in 2016. So it's been eight years. She's been on top. She's won quite a few ODI and T20 World Cups with Australia as well. A very integral part. And this is the rundown for the Australians. Uh, they basically have all-rounders all over the place. McGraw bowls quite well. It's a medium-fast bowler and has this strong batsmanship about her as well. Another single taken, this time from Beth Mooney. She's got a strike rate of around 30. So this is something which is very surprising, I guess. And played reverse to find the gap because they're really trying to, you know, score runs and that was not easier from the very beginning that we have seen from the Bangladeshi bowlers. They try to keep the line and length very tight, not giving that much room to the batters to explore it. And especially to the des destructive batters, they made it tight and made it really tough. And this time, she was anticipating the height and it didn't bounce that much. And that was also edge. After 16, it's 43 for 3. <laughs> Looking at the scorecard there, Lisa Healy, the only one getting into double digits. Her 24, after she was gone, Australians did not have a lot of momentum in this inning so far. Nahida was a close shave again. Beth Mooney struggling against the spinners. Beth Mooney, such an experienced campaigner for Team Australia. Played 71 international ODI matches, scored 2,000. 326 runs and had three centuries beside her name but this time she is squared up you know it's not getting done that much opportunity to score runs so far but she is there as she has experienced she knows now she needs to survive survival is key for australia right now they need to build a partnership as we enter the middle phase of the game the australian innings did not get off. There was an attempted sweep. Just couldn't find the connection there, McGraw, but she gets the leg by nonetheless. Bangladesh, they got really a very good start in aspect of, you know, the wickets that you got. Now, the bowlers in the middle overs, you need to capitalize it. You need to utilize it and uh, keep building the pressure to the opponent. Naida has been very tight, as usual. Her career economy in one-day internationals is just shy above three, which is very impressive. Came with the front foot and had an intention to play in cover. But it was very good adjustment from Nahida. Couldn't give that room to the batter, Beth Mooney. It was uh, sort of, a, you know, above the eye line. She tried to bowl and uh, just taken a single. This is what they have to do, the Australian batters right now. Graft for those singles. Try to take their innings into the middle phase where they gradually get comfortable as we look at the sun. It's gradually coming out of the clouds and the wicket might get better for batting as time goes. We'll have to see. Another dot played out there by Talia McGraw. That ends the over. After 17, it's 46 for 3. Have a look at the bowling card for Bangladesh. Four bowlers bowled so far. Maruf Akhtar with an industrious spell of six overs. 
she caught the big fish of Alisa Healy. Sultana Khatun caught the first breakthroughs for Bangladesh. A couple of wickets for her as well. And then Rabia and Nahida keeping things tight for Bangladesh. So the first wicket fell on six, the second on 21, and the third on 27. These two Australians out there trying to forge a partnership as we go into the first drinks break of the Australian batting innings. That was a very good start from the two bowlers, Maruf Akhtar and Sultan Akhatun purchased three wickets within 27 and after that there is a partnership between Beth Mooney and Thalia McGrath they're trying their level best to repair this damage and got a partnership as well of 19 runs so far This is Rabia once again on her third over. This time she, she has gone around the wicket. A bit of flight, defended. Starts with a dot. She starts well as usual. The way that. Oh, that was close. Inches off the off stump. Beth Mooney survives. That was a lucky break for her. And I think the captain, she is thinking, how did it miss the stumps? Oh my goodness. That was a flight. She missed the flight. And after that, it was very close to the stump. Captain, all the fielders, they were really surprised and shocked. How did it miss the stumps as well? That's brilliant bowling from Rabia. Got a good start. She's been one of the rising stars in this Bangladesh setup. Another leg spinner was caught a googly in her as well. Should go the other way. So the slip comes into action in most of her deliveries. Beautiful flight. There was drift and turn. Oh, almost chain varnish. <laughs> and kept low. That, that's the thing that we were talking about from the very beginning. 
you know the ball will keep low and the spinners they will get advantage and this is what we are watching it's not getting easier for the batters you know to anticipate the line length and the you know to negotiate the ball perfectly and this time with the back foot punch it's trying to survive dangerously it's very interesting Dalia Magra just trying to read the pace of the wicket this time well driven into the deep gets herself a single Australia crawling into their team 50 they've lost the top three the most destructive three batters they have but they can bat long they've got a very big batting lineup a lot of all-rounders in the side so they'll still be confident of getting to a good total if this partnership can set sail Mirpur is taking their test not an easy task to you know adjust in this sort of pitch and uh, ends with another top delivery after 18 it's 48 for 3 Nahida to continue. She's still got a slip in. Midon's inside the circle. There's a short 45 at fine leg and third man. And a short square leg as well. Oh, play and a miss. Tried to make room, but didn't come properly. That the height she anticipated. That's the thing that we are talking about. It's not that much easier in this sort of pitch to get the right height of the ball and uh, there there will be some sort of chances for the bowler she's looking for those chances Nahida bounce came straight in and the finger goes up brilliant from Nahida first from the comp box and then the umpire it was really plum and uh, didn't take that much time umpire and that was a very clean leg before another breakthrough for for team bangladesh this is 48 for four partnership breaks that will be really some sort of pace for team bangladesh once again that was the armor from naida went straight through magra played for the turn missed the inside edge straight on to the pads and it was an easy decision for the umpire in the end so four wickets down as we look at how things transpired neither she had a little chat with nigar sultana right before this delivery and i think they were plying on this she was trying to beat her outside the off stump with some good orthodox left arm spin and then just went with the arm that was a brilliant variation that brought the fourth wicket for bangladesh yes according to the wicket these are the deliveries that you have to do in uh, you know that was a very important partnership they after losing three wickets within 27 that was the partnership of 21 so definitely they tried to repair that damage but it's once again and this time Nahida this is her first wicket experienced campaigner this is brilliant from Nahida after the new batter Ashley Gardner oh that was again with Ariel gets off the mark but not very convincingly Ashley Gardner 26 years of age 66 matches she played and scored 921 runs no century 550s but remember she's an all-rounder 81 wickets beside her name Gardner is one of the important components in the Australian spin attack right arm off spinner she's got a lot of wickets in her career so far but right now she's had to do with the bat that was a, a nicely cut shot Beth Mooney after a long time finds the middle of the bat but just can't find the gap Beth Mooney can give you a tough time because 
she is experienced and she knows how to build partnership and how to repair this sort of damage went for the back foot punched and taken the single Yathmuni has played 42 deliveries in this inning so far so I think she's got her, her head straight she really wants to take her innings as deep as possible because she knows she's got the power to cover up for lost time Nahida bowls another brilliant over wicket taking one for her 50 for 4 Australia Another over. Got the turn. And this time very much watchful because four wickets down. They need partnership. They need to stay there. They need to survive. Steps out Beth Mooney. Gets the dancing feet on. But there is a long on in place. Just rotating the strike, giving it back to our new partner, Ash Gardner. She's played in the women's IPL just recently. So a lot of them from the Australian squad has actually flown up uh, from India. They were close by. And if you look at where Gardner was playing, she played for the Gujarat Giants along with Beth Mooney. So both of them were for the same franchise side in the Women's Premier League. So if they get settled, they know how to you know, maximize the innings, how to get runs, how to score big. So definitely the bowlers will be careful. Rabia, the only bowler who took maiden this morning so far. Still a weekday here in Dhaka. Not expecting a lot of crowd, but Bangladesh women's team really getting a lot of attention as the ball is nicely square driven. Beth Mooney will get a couple. Three fielders chasing. Just look at that, Mahfuz. Looks like the intensity is up. They're very upbeat. They're very courageous and confident. That's, that's the word. Why not? This is mighty Australia and uh, you have put pressure very early in uh, 54 for 4 the team they are you know very much motivated after this score definitely no doubt look at the turn that she is getting and the batters she has no clue what's happening here it's excellent from Rabia goes for the googly once again but that was quicker but Mooney had to adjust right in the end putting up her defenses She's on 13. Again, this time Rabia flights it. Quick single taken nonetheless. Good running by the two batters. And that ends another tight over. After 20, it's 55 for 4, Australia. Still the four bowlers being used. Rabia is the only one who hasn't picked up a wicket yet, but she looks like she could pick something. She's still got six more overs, and Bangladesh have quite a few other bowlers that Nigar Sultana can look into. But she's helping others to pick wickets because she got maiden. She is creating much dot deliveries and uh, that is creating pressure look at this this is the thing that we are watching that they are under pressure coming stepping down the wicket and trying to hit you know inside out shot to relieve the pressure 
but it's not that much it's not getting that much easier for the batter to get the room and to you know get runs and this time she went for the back foot and defended yes snyder she's got her struts on recently received the award for the player of the month for november that was a play and miss again. Just look at the variable bounce that she's extracting. It was outside off. Beth Mooney went for the cut. A very, very risky shot in this context at least because if you can't judge the, the bounce, it's, it's difficult to play horizontal bat shots here, Mahfuz. As well, the, judging the correct height. It's not getting right so far. Down the leg. Tried for a sweep. Chance of a run out. Oh my goodness. The batter. She came faster, and that was a very good throw, very good fielding. No doubt, it was uh, sort of a you know reflection of the team that they are how much they are motivated. That's excellent fielding there, and oh, direct hit could have chance. been gone. Could have been gone. She lost her bat in the process there. Gardner back on strike. She's seen her mates. Come in and out of the wicket. This time, oh, had to step out to the pitch of the ball. That was a good attempted inside-out shot from Gardner. Very brave from her. She gets the reward. Gets herself to three of four. Comparatively, she has been the one who's trying to move ahead and trying to get to the pitch of the ball. Different batters have different ways of negotiating spin especially in slow and turning wickets last ball there from Nahida is a dot and with that 21 overs gone it's 57 for four Australia women as we have a change in the com box Shanur and Shaman Noy will be joining soon Thank you so much, Parvis. It's been another enthralling seven overs between bat and ball. Australia losing another wicket in the process. Bangladesh keeping things within a tight leash. And they've made a good start. They've made a wonderful start, you'd almost have to say, given the strength and quality of this. Australian batting unit and Rabea the leg break bowler she will continue with a slip in place again it keeps low there is a fielder there it's another dot ball overall Bangladesh will be pleased with this start but they know the job is not even half done a lot of overs left to bowl as Rabia continues. Again, a tight line and length maintained. Another dot ball. Yeah, Rabia has been super economical. Just given away nine runs. She's on to her fifth over. The next spinner. Wrong on. It's a slip in position. There's a deep mid wicket in place, long off. Deep extra cover. So three fielders guarding. The boundaries. This one straightened a bit, much flatter it was. Managed to beat the fielder inside the circle. Managed to take a single. It's Beth Mooney, the second Aussie batter in this innings to make it to double figures she's taken 52 deliveries and such has been the requirement of the day absolutely it's been a hard graft for the visitors another dot ball a bit of flight this time but just like that previous delivery just don't want to comment on it technically Taking help uh, of the on-field umpire, Vindarathi from India. Just 
Now she gets back. Gets down the track to the pitch of the ball. Nicely played. Oh, laps and fielding. And that allows a boundary. Against the run of play. Ruins the over of the last delivery. Was well played nevertheless. But needed to be defended. Nigar Sultana Jyoti. Certainly not happy. Australia women are 62 for 4. After 22. Yes, we can see once again a lot of flight being given and uh, this time getting to the pitch of the delivery. There was a fielder there and uh, she slipped a bit. Perhaps the conditions, there was overnight rain. The outfield slightly slippery it seems. And uh, she can smile about it for the time being. A few blushes perhaps. A regulation stop in any case had the field not had any overnight rain so 22 overs are done 62 for 4 Australia a new bowler it's going to be Fahima Khatun another leggy nicely played of the back foot Good throw in from Nahida from the deep. Ashley Gardner doing the right thing. Something brings a smile on Beth Mooney's face. The right thing by that I mean is giving the strike back to Beth Mooney. Yeah, absolutely. This partnership, uh, if you uh, take a look at it, uh, Mooney, she scored 18 runs. She's got the boundary. Ashley Gardner a bit newer into the crease. Just the four runs, everything she's played on the offside. Mooney. Her wagon wheel looks a lot different. She's played shots on the onside, on the offside, made sure that she uses the crease and gets those runs wherever she can as Fahima continues. Swept away. Gets past that fielder inside the circle, but now this time Shobana Mustari covers a fair bit of ground and gets a good throw back in. By that time, Beth Mooney's back for a couple. And something tells me now she's going to step on the gas. She's got things going. Both Rabe and uh, Fahima Khatun, uh, the two leg spinners, working in tandem. They've been uh, bowling good lines and good lengths. And once again, we can see another good length uh, delivery. They've been targeting that area that good length area on the fourth and fifth stump as a result of which it's been difficult for the Australians uh, to get anything loose. Comes down the wicket, waits for the flight to dip down and times it nicely, finds the gap. She's shown patience. Picked the right deliveries and I, again it's the right time of the innings. She's choosing her deliveries quite well. Beth Mooney is in good form. She scored the three fifties in the recently concluded WPL, the Women's Premier League. 78 against South Africa, 82 unbeaten also against South Africa. So definitely it's another batter who's in good form. Good touch. Beth Mooney. Ready five runs. Of this over. Wrong on. Gets the better of the batter, does Fahima. Yeah, good delivery there. And uh, speaking of good deliveries and Bangladesh bowlers bowling in tandem, you look at this Australian partnership be building right now. And they do have a long batting order. Another delivery that's carefully watched. And these are some dangerous signs with the batters coming down to the pitch of the ball, trying to play it. And that's the end of another over. Done with over number 23, Australia, 67 for four. So Rabia will continue from the media end. Leg spinners from both ends operated. Fighter delivery. 
right handed effort I think there wasn't a catch it's the bump ball rather <coughs> there have been a few opportunities Shaman Nai for the Bangladesh fielders and bowlers they could have had a few more wickets at this moment Rabia she'll be looking for her first wicket but not with deliveries like that that was a bit too short and came on nicely onto the bat played very nicely off the back foot by Ash Gardner she moves on to nine and in fact seven runs for Ash uh, from 11 deliveries Beth Mooney on the other hand 22 from 58 and I was talking about some dangerous signs both these batters are getting onto the pitch of the delivery they're reading the flight well the flight of delivery again nicely pushed away Beth Mooney, she's uh, been there for some time, as we mentioned. Been there for 59 deliveries yet. During this single, we could observe she running fast, running hard, the first one, looking for the second. Yeah, and uh, you can see the footwork from both these uh, Australian batters a lot more confident. They're using their feet, and we see the reverse sweep coming out. And it'll be a chase for the fielder at short third. She gets there eventually, but not before two more runs are scored. So we can see some good signs if you're an Australian fan. Some dangerous signs if you're a Bangladesh fan, because you can see both these batters are getting set and they're playing their shots. Your partnership now, the highest in this innings. 24 between Beth Mooney and Ashley Gardner comes down the wicket slowed it down Rabia oh, she's a smart batter Beth Mooney with all that experience with Rabia is also up to the task because she's giving it a lot of flight you can see she's trying to use those uh, cracks on uh, both ends of the pitch and getting the ball to spin a lot more Another one where she's tried to do the same and the batter getting to the pitch of it. It's good cricket all round. Another over comes to an end after 24. Australia 72 for 4. Welcome back to the Mirpur Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium. First ever bilateral series. That's what the Australia women are here for in Bangladesh. To kickstart things. First of three ODIs. Bangladesh captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti, having won the toss, decided to field first. And this is the lady who did the initial damage. Sultana Khatun back in action. Nicely played off the back foot. Struffle shot, straight pull. Ashley Gardner keeping things simple. Just give the strike back to Beth Mooney. And I think I think Shanur uh, Jyoti senses something. With Beth Mooney, she's just uh, trying to get going. Partnership now 25 of 35. And hence, she's brought back her strike bowler, Sultana Khatun. Coming around the wicket. Short. Will not trouble her. Nicely pulled away. And as you mentioned that with the strike bowler coming back against a batter who looks to be getting set. The sun is also playing hide and seek 
here in this match because one moment it's gone and it seems like it might rain. Another moment right now, this bright sunshine out there. Well, yeah. I think if Bangladesh can keep on blocking the boundaries, it will force the Aussie batters to try something extraordinary. Not much turn there. Just looking to find the cabin. See how eager Mooney was from the North Strikers then to come back to strike. Absolutely. Because she wants a bit of uh, the action as well against uh, this bowler. Mooney and Gardner building a partnership nicely. And Bangladesh looking to get their fifth wicket. That's why Jyoti is brought on Ra uh, Sultana. And on this occasion, a beautiful shot by Ash Gardner. Gets four runs for it. One of the shots of the match. One of the shots of the day so far. Inside out. As we can see once again. Getting to the pitch of the delivery. And just a few bounces onto the boundary. That long off region. So good shot by a set batter. As you see in the final delivery, it's a bit down the leg side, played onto the pads. Another dot ball, but a good over for the Australian team. Six runs off it. After 25, Australia 78 for four. Fahima with the wrong on. They're excited. Give in. It's the big wicket of Beth Mooney. Just brushed the bat on the way. And she's gotten the breakthrough. She goes for 25 as Bangladesh celebrate. She makes that long walk back in dismay. It's 78 for 5. Excellent bowling there by Fahima. Gets the wicket. Captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti was looking for that fifth wicket. And that happens from the bowling of Fahima. Again, tossed up. The batter not sure whether to really come onto the front foot or not. A bit late onto it. And eventually, the wicket goes. Australia, right now, once again. In a spot of bother at 78 for 5. And Beth Mooney, she was set 25 from 64 deliveries. She's out. So as we were saying, it's very difficult to get set in this pitch. And we've seen two batters, the Australian captain and now Beth Mooney, Alisa Healy and Beth Mooney, both have gotten out in the 20s. Healy 24 from 39. Mooney... 25 from 64. Faima Khatun, she's got her tail up. Oh, another one, is it? Oh, the umpire's hand isn't moved. That looked very close. Annabelle Sutherland, the new batter in. That ball went agonizingly close past the outside edge of the bat. As you can see once again, some late turn. There was a bit of movement, but... Perhaps just through the air and not off the bat. 
That was so so close. Another good delivery. A straighter one from Fahima. So after the wicket, she's brought about two more dots. Australia 78 for five from 25.3 overs. Annabel Sutherland being put under the cross right now. Finally, she gets off the mark. They're able to build that pressure over some time yet again. It's that boundary from Ashley Gardner in the previous over that released the pressure. When she came down the wicket to Rabia, Rabia was guilty of pitching it too full. But wicket in the very first over, very first delivery, beg your pardon, again googly. It's all happening for Bangladesh. It's 79 for 5. The top side in women's cricket. They've got something to worry about. Single and a wicket so far in this over. Oh, this one kept low. Kept low. Was the googly yet again. She prefers bowling the googly more, more often than not does Fahima. It's a brilliantly bowled over. And certainly one which will uh, provide some relief to Jyoti and her team. 79 for 5. Rabia, she continues. Perhaps a change of ends. It's on to her seventh over yet again. Yes, this is a change of ends for her. Need some uh, scissor work. God is well. Lending the assisting hand with the scissor. There seemed to be something off with the ball. All the strings perhaps coming off. Again, we're seeing a lot of turn. And Shomunda in the last few overs, the turn has seemingly increased from the spinners, especially the leg spinners getting so much turn. Most flatter, outside edge. No slip. We'll get two easy runs. More than that, would have been a sharp catch on offer for a fielder in the slip cotton. Well, she does get away. The whole match, we've been seeing a slip in place, and on this occasion, in this over, the slip not present, and you see an opportunity goes begging. You have to get the set batters like Ash Gardner out. At this time she plays it off the back foot and that prompts Jyoti to bring a slip back in. Rabia looking for that wicket. A bit unlucky right now. Well, certainly, the Australian spinners will also come into play. And that brings the question, what would be a good total? We've seen Bangladesh in the Pakistan series on the same ground. Linger around the 160-70 mark, defend that, tie that. Absolutely. I think uh, anything less than 200 would be good. As another dot ball is bowled, 27 overs gone, 83 for 5, Australia.
invited to bat first Australia women Alisa Healy initially looked the only batter who was a bit comfortable 24 for 39 then uh, the Bangladesh bowlers well they did they took over particularly Sultana Khatun couple of wickets then Marupa with one and Fahima got it. now there was a Kassinafa dropped by Shobhana Mustari the pretty straightforward one and Marufa yet again from the very first delivery beg your pardon Fahima could have had another one and Mustari has dropped it think it was Ashley Gardner yes it was was looking for the big one but dropped how costly could that be immediately you see her changing her field position the captain calling her in interesting she comes down the wicket yet again this time was the tradition it was the orthodox leg spinner so played it inside out with the turn now Jyoti has noticed that she was going over long on she's given a challenge to Annabel Sutherland instead go for it again so again you can see the batter is being tempted into playing those aggressive shots. Australia, they want to get a move on as well. This is the 28th over yet to really get going in this innings. Current run rate just a touch over three. Flighted it much slower. You mentioned how we're noticing much more turn. Yes, the ball has gotten older also the leg spinners they're slowing it down at times well the wicket of Ashley Gardner had that been taken would have been a completely different story come Aussies would have been uh, in complete disarray comfortably played off the back foot yeah they would have been uh, under a lot of bother and that's two overs in a row where there have been chances one dropped one through that slips cordon where there wasn't a slip in place right now there is as Fahima continues she'll feel a bit aggrieved to not have taken that second wicket as another single comes off the final delivery so after 28 overs Australia 87 for five Still continuing with Rabia. Oh, tentative, tentative. No, yes, it's much slower from Rabia, but just have a feeling the pitch has started to grip a little. I love this bowling action, and you're absolutely right. The pitch is starting to grip a bit more. There's a lot more turn, but look at her action. It's beautiful. Yeah, on to her eighth over. Relying on her is uh, Nigar Sultana Jyoti. See, because she is bowling so tight, is we are seeing that the batters are trying to take their chances in the Fahima over. And in fact, the first deliveries, that they're, they're trying to charge Fahima coming down the wicket. And as you mentioned a little while earlier, one of those uh, overs, the first delivery was a wicket. That one of Beth Mooney almost got Ashley Gardner only because uh, even though she has not got a wicket Rabe has been pretty much on the money absolutely and uh, Rabia's action once again you notice that she hurries the batters with with her quick arm action another dot ball she gets by bowling a tight line in length and this is the sort of bowler Australia aren't used to facing this sort of a leg spinner 
was a bit different with her action, but this time played inside out into the gap. Two more added to the total. Australia counter punching and trying to make Bangladesh pay for those lapses in the field. Especially Sashley Gardner. Credit should be given to her the way she's batted, except for that uh, opportunity when she was dropped in her teens in terms of score, of course. 20 of 27 now. Bit of turn, played off the back foot. No trouble there. 90 for 5 after 29. We'll have a change in commentary with uh, Ahmed bin Parvez and Mahfuz Rahman joining us once again. Well, we're deep into the middle overs now in Australia. Half their batting side down, still struggling at the moment. Thank you, Shamun Noy and Shanur. Quick single taken again. We've seen this happen quite a lot in Mirpur, especially when the ball starts to turn. Don't get a lot of bounce. The batters tend to understand the value of singles and playing a minimum number of dot balls which will help the side definitely and Nigar Sultana Jyoti coming back she's got the first slip in again as I welcome Mahfuz yeah thank you so very much and uh, there's a very interesting thing opportunity came Bangladesh uh, took a wicket and opportunity missed as well so there was something you know it was mixed and uh, Fahima, she took very important wicket of Beth Mooney, who could have been very much dangerous, spent a lot of time there. See, excellent piece of bowling, and the main thing that they are struggling, the height, that we, were, we talked a lot before. So we were talking off air about what could be a good total here. We know that the first innings average total for the six ODIs played in 2023 was around 170. Australia right now look on course to go close to that but they've lost five wickets which could put them in a bit of a predicament. Uh, what do you think Mahfuz? Uh, can they still reach 170 and 80 in, in this innings? And if they can reach 150 it will be really tough because of the wicket and uh, they have also the quality bowlers if you consider the pace they have five paces today but spinners are doing their jobs here so they have also spin options and uh, definitely they will go with their experience the paces they can you know come with so many variations and they can pace off so it will not be that much easier tax for the tag races if they score 150. the australians skipping at a three per over run rate gardner steps down Gets another single. Quick turn from Sutherland, showing some sort of desperation now. Talk about Annabelle Sutherland. She's coming off some very good batting form. Australia hosted the only test against South Africa at the beginning of this year, and Sutherland had a double hundred in that. She scored 210. So she knows how to bat. She can bat. And she can score it big as we look at the bowling card here for Bangladesh. So far, five bowlers used. Fahima Khatun being the fifth. Four overs for 14. And she's got the one wicket. Rabe has actually been unlucky, Mahfuz, uh, for not getting a wicket yet. Yeah, definitely. Bowled really well. Economy is 3.25. All the bowlers, they have wickets. But still, she has a chance. Two more overs to go for Rabe. And you were talking about Sutherland. She can be dangerous. She played so far, you know, 29 ODI, scored 400 plus runs, and she has one century and also 150. So she knows how to convert the runs. 
Wow. That's the good thing from the Aussie batters. Using the crease, going to the back and adjusting the turns. That is really awesome. Yeah, keeping an eye on the ball, meeting it late. That has been Gardner's job so far. She's played a very good knock. 22 look the most comfortable and composed. She plays the late cut, finds the gap. A big chase for Fahima and she gives up. Very important boundary for Australia from the bat of Ashley Gardner. That was a well-placed shot. Played it late as Mahfouz was speaking. She met the ball quite late. Just enough to find that gap past the short third man. That was really important to use the crease. That's what we were talking about the nature of the wicket and the ball the way the ball behaving so you have to use the crease go to the back foot and uh, just hand eye coordination has to be perfect and this time she came forward and drive it into the on side and we'll get a single just one run away from the hundred milestone here so the double A's, Annabelle and Ashley in the crease, full and straight, not a lot of turn, nicely fended off, important to judge these balls pretty well, look for scoring opportunities when it comes by, two batters seem to be a lot more confident, that was turn, that was massive turn, absolutely beat Sutherland all ends up Naida hands in her head hit it into the very nice length and uh, look at the line and turn she got there was nothing for the batter to do here and this time she was watchful till the end played late will get a single and this brings up 100 for Australia so 100 for 5 after 31 Yes, Sultana, she is back and she's taken the first wicket and captain brings her again, ball seven over, got two wickets, came down the wicket, she missed it and finally the chase was not successful and they got the boundary, welcome boundary. That's a nice shot from Sutherland. Timed it pretty well. Came down the wicket. Hit it straight and through the legs of the bowler. Could have done better, I guess. Just missed the... The pace of the ball was too much for her and... They will fancy the off-spinner here. Sutherland and Garner. Fielding change is in there. Square leg comes in. So keeping a lot of protection straighter. Ball is driven on to the long on region there. Both the batters looking confident now. And both the fielders are in the deep. Long on and long off. And that time the long off fielder, she was in uh, the mid off position. And there is a deep mid wicket. Look, she went for the back foot. And then a very nice pull shot. And there was a room, there was a space. That's what we were talking about. That uh, go for the back foot and uh, create the space and then create the shot. That's a very nice shot. And she gets the boundary. Absolutely. That's what you call a manufactured shot there. It wasn't too short, but she just went for it. She saw the square leg fielder come into the circle, made best use of that gap experience of the Australians showing 
She took the challenge pretty well, but Jyoti is still sticking to the field placement. Still no one there behind square. Follows up the boundary with a single. Brilliant execution by the two batters now. A couple of boundaries in this over. So it's one of the biggest ones from Australia. 110 for five. They should be relaxed. They got two boundaries so far and must be. And they will deal with the singles right now. And it will not be that much necessary to take more risk in this over. Expensive compared to this innings. 10 runs so far. And there is another single to finish this over. 11 from this over. That's the most expensive over so far. So 32. This is triple one for five. So the most expensive over of the innings, we just saw from Sultana, she came back for her second spell, did not have a good eighth over, it must be said, but she was really good, especially with the new ball, and picked up wickets from lack of turn, it seems. Skidded the ball around, caught Leachfield, later Ellis Perry, Snahida comes in, vice captain of the Bangladesh women's side got into the national team when she was just 15 years old. She's been in the circuit for nine years, Mahfuz. Yes, definitely. And another thing, Purvis, batters cannot defend to every bowler. They need to attack some bowlers and they found Sultana, the right arm off spinner. She's not getting that much turn and they found a way to negotiate her with the boundaries coming up. You know, getting the ball into the slot and punishing her. It's a game of matchups. Sultana turning the ball in towards. Oh, that's gone! Square leg umpire raises his finger. Neither celebrates. Yet another one bites the dust for Australia. The sixth wicket is gone. Ashley Gardner goes off for a well played 32, but neither gets her second. An important breakthrough for Bangladesh. That was not Sultana to negotiate after you know coming up and leaving the crease dangerously because Nahida she used to get turns she got turns and uh, she was beat by the turn just look at the action she came she left the crease and she thought she will get the ball into the slot but it turned a lot than she expected Beat by the turn. A yes. nice job done by the captain behind the stumps. That was it was big. It was big for Bangladesh. And one of the most dangerous batters in this Australian side playing in the middle, late middle order, Ashley Gardner. She's gone. Jyoti fumbled the ball a bit. She took her time, but Gardner was so far down the wicket, couldn't find her way back and has to go back to the dugout. So yet another wicket falls for Bangladesh. They've got a once in a lifetime opportunity to get Australia all out. <laughs> They'll have to make use of that, Mahfuz. They just played once back in 2022 in the World Cup in Wellington. So this is the chance that Bangladesh strike races they got on in their home soil. And uh, they are creating opportunity to win this match as well. So it's 112 for six. You know, hopes are there. The set batter. Ashley Garner, she is out. She played 38 deliveries, scored 32. She was well set and got the very precious wicket. That was also a very good delivery. Front foot defense, very much watchful. She should be Wareham because she needs to understand about the wicket and the behavior as well. Georgia Wareham, fresh off the Women's Premier League in India. Leg spinning all rounder from Australia would have her say when she has the ball in hand but right now it has to be with the bat as she goes off the mark 
Nicely timed through the covers. Naida has been a bright spot for Bangladesh throughout the last few years. This Bangladesh team coming into ascendancy, especially after the Asia Cup win in 2018. That was the first time when they could really stamp their name into the history books. The first ever trophy in the Asian level for Bangladesh. Big appeal from Nahida. Must have had the inside edge first. The umpire is not interested. Another over gone. A successful one for Bangladesh. 113 for 6, Australia. Yes, that actually hit the inside edge. So moving in from plan A to plan B, that's that's where Australia they're going right now. Because initially the plan was to maybe go for the attack in the first 10 overs within the power play. That did not work out. And then they went on with a big grafting effort, which also did not pay a lot of dividends. So now back to the hard hitting plan. 113 for 6 Australia. Sultana back into the attack. She's conceded 11 runs from her last over. And that was the most expensive over in this inning so far. But captain had her trust. And uh, she came, talked to her. Because Karna, she is out. The dangerous batter who cheers her in last over. But as Karna is out, still the captain came to the bowler, talked and uh, definitely set something, the strategy. Let's see whether she can do it or not. Yeah, we've seen Sultana finish off her overs in the previous matches as well. That's how Jyoti wants to use her, both with the new ball and then tries to finish off her spell within the 35th, 36th over. That's the template that Jyoti is using. That was nicely swept, but brilliant fielding, a single take and a quick one, a risky one. Stumps were dislodged, but batters in safely. Georgia Wareham back onto the strike as we look at that fielding effort there. Brilliant. Ball was coming fast. It was a good take and throw back to the stumps, but the batter was in. So Australia trying to score at least at four, four and a half, five per over from here on. If they really want to reach a score close to 200, but they've lost quite a few wickets, which is holding them back. 200? Are you sure? Will they eye for 200 from here? Or what should be the first, you know, milestone to achieve? Yeah, I think playing out the 50 overs would be the first challenge for them. And then uh, maybe in the last four or five overs, if they still have wickets in hand, they'll maybe reassess. Slight misfielding there. Marufa, she's one of the better fielders in the side. Oh. Sultana is going with the flight, but not getting that much turn. And uh, she is sort of easy reading. Batters are reading her very, you know, accurately and uh, charging her as well. And I think Team Australia, they will be eyeing for 150 first. And after that, maybe 70, maybe 80. It's like that. But initially, reaching 150 is very much important for them right now because six wickets down, it's 117. Making good use of her feet. We've seen quite a few batters now try that against the Bangladesh spinners, trying to come down the wicket. That could be risky as we saw Gardner. She came down the wicket and got stumped. So you'll have to keep a good eye on the ball. Sultana Khatun. Into her ninth over now. Tad bit expensive in her second spell, but still being entrusted by the captain, Nigar Sultana. Moving on to the onside. That's another dot to finish off the over. It's 117 for six, Australia.
that was a scorecard of Team Australia and 32 was the highest score by Ashley Garner but she's out Sutherland and Wareham they have the responsibility to have another very good partnership here went for the back foot and tried to cut it away but here is another top delivery from Nahida could be her last over and then the remaining two overs of her spell could be kept for after the 40 over mark for the third power play Sutherland oh negotiating that pretty well that bounced quite a bit first slip was interested for a second and she was not ready for that sort of bounce it was an uneven bounce and uh, couldn't capitalize it Annabel Sutherland faced 28 deliveries this time came forward and it was a very good adjustment from Nahida as well couldn't give that room to the batter to play that shot it's another top delivery three consecutive dots this is good tight bowling from Nahida and the batters seem to play her pretty cautiously at the moment fielder pushed out to long on Sutherland she sees that but just goes for that soft drive not trying to wind up too much there's still a lot of time in the innings for the Australians to go in the charge it's good and tight from Nahida once again fended off a barrage of dot deliveries just putting the pressure on will it be a maiden and if it is it will be the second maiden in this innings the first one got by Rabia yes this is the second maiden over and first for the Nahida and this is 117 for 6 after 35 and yes time for a change in the com box Shanur and Shaman Noy will be joining soon Fifteen more overs to go. Australia women, a hundred and seventeen for six. Georgia Wareham, along with uh, Annabel Sutherland, are the two batters uh, in the middle at the moment as the players enjoy the drinks. The bowling card has been successful for Bangladesh so far. Good toss to win. Good decision by the captain Jyoti to field first. Sultana Khatun doing the damage initially two for 37 of her nine overs more factor soul pacer one for 16 for her she got the all-important wicket of alisa healy the aussie skipper and neither two for 21 for her off her eight overs took a bit of time but then got important wickets nahida talia mcgraw and then ashley gardner the last one to go Faima Khatun, 1 for 14 of her 4 overs. And even though Rabia Khan did not get any wicket, I think she's bowled beautifully. None for 26 of her 8 overs. It will be interesting to see how the Aussie batters go about their business. I'm joined by Shanu Rabani. And uh, had the privilege of speaking to both the captains, Shanu, during the toss. And firstly, I, meant, I asked Nigar Sultana Jyoti, how much would she want to speaking of totals how much at how much would she would prefer to restrict the Aussie batters to she mentioned somewhere around uh, below 200 
and asked the same question, rephrased it a bit and asked Alisa Healy what she reckons would be a good total. She, she told me that she doesn't want to pinpoint something precisely. She wants to go out in the middle and see how the wicket plays out, but they'll be eyeing somewhere around maybe the 250 mark. Now, currently at this stage, I think 160, 170 would be a good total, a very good total, in fact, for Australia to get and uh, give their bowlers a chance that they can manage to get some early wickets. They're in with the game. Absolutely agree with you, Shaman, because I also feel that uh, with the way this uh, match and this innings is progressing, it seems like a very bowler-friendly wicket and 150 with what Australia have in their bowling ranks could be a match-winning total. Bit of turn now. Sultana in for her 10th and final over of the back foot. You mentioned uh, in terms of the wicket, you were doing the pitch report. You mentioned it's going to keep a bit low. What, what, what you've known, noticed uh, as the overs have gone by, the innings has progressed, is a bit of a variable bounce. And uh, perhaps a bit of variable in, in terms of pace also. At times the ball has gripped. At times it has spun. It has turned a bit more than expected. And it's those areas on both ends of the pitch where there are a few cracks. And I think the spinners are, some of them at least, are always looking to aim at those cracks. Bit of turn and bit of bounce. Certainly more now when she's bowling her 10th over as far as Sultana is concerned. Of course, with the new ball, she did not get as much per purchase. But taking nothing away from the Bangladesh bowlers, particularly the captain, how she's led the side and she's been pretty pretty accurate and pretty acute, if I may say, with the bowling changes. She's been wonderful and uh, she can consider herself a bit unlucky given the fielding has sometimes let the team down. A few dropped catches here and there, misfielding as well. Uh, that could have been 120 for 8 right now for Australia. Doing the right thing are Annabelle Sutherland and Georgia Wareham. Uh, don't want to jinx it for Australia, but whenever there was a partnership ongoing, the aggressor or the one who looked more comfortable went to look out for chances, taking take on some chances and lost the wicket. Trying to tempt Annabel Sutherland. Sutherland more cautious. Five singles in this uh, Sultana over. As she's done with her quota. Two for 40, two for 10. Oz Australia women. After 36, are 122 for 6. Thirty six overs done with Australia women. One twenty two for six. New bowler. Shorna Akhtar now. The off spinner. Leg break bowler. Beg your pardon. Over the wicket. Played it uh, nicely towards cover and single of the first delivery. Now it's a decent partnership ongoing again. They lost their last wicket of Ashley Gardner at 112. It was in the 33rd over. It's in the air for a bit, but in the gap. So 11 runs make it 12 now is the partnership. And if they can just prolong it and take it deeper, Jyoti is going to have some concerns of 
who she's going to bowl. Of course, she has options, but if they target one bowler, I'm sure they'll be looking to take a deep outside edge. Dips in front of the fielder at slip, allows a single. One thing to notice, Shomona, is that the singles have been coming in the last over. Five came, and in this over, so far, three of the first three. And something very refreshing about the women's team is the number of leg spinners that they have. We often talk about Bangladesh men's team looking for a leg spinner. They found one in Rishad. You see all of these leg spinners for the women's side. In fact, uh, Shornak, they're being the third one in the side. We've seen uh, Fahima. We've seen Rabia. Certainly a privilege. The Tigresses enjoy. Oh, that's beautifully bold. Just past that outside edge, drawing the batter and also extracting some bounce. Almost the perfect delivery. Too good for the batter. Or else there would have been a slight nick. Much flatter. Finds the gap. I think that's what that that's what a Mirpur pitch does. Tests your patience. Four singles of this one. One, two, six for six. Fahima being brought back into the action from the media end. Fahima Khatun. It's that interesting ploy by Jyoti. You know, more, we've seen quite a few occasions that she operates leg spinners from both ends. And uh, another ploy by Jyoti which we have to talk about is how she's placing her fielders. She's allowing the more set batter to take the single, to take that easy single down the ground so that the slightly newer batter comes on and has to face the music. As we can see, Fahima once again trying to put the brakes on. The last few overs, the singles have started to come and it's mostly because of some proactive batting from Annabel Sutherland and Georgia Wareham, both Right now, having played a lot of deliveries, Sutherland 40, where I'm 12, they're looking set. Another good delivery now. Fima finally getting that dot ball she was looking for. Fima's captain, though, Nigar Sultana Jyoti, will want a few quicker wickets. Get them wrapped under 150, perhaps. Laps and fielding again. It was well struck. She was on top of it. Was uh, Annabel Sutherland slightly short, and she rocked back onto the back foot, crunched it through covers. And Jyoti certainly not happy with the fielding. Gets four runs. Yeah, a bit too short, and there was enough room to play that off the back foot. A very good-looking shot by the batter on that occasion. As Fahima continues, again it's short, it's cut away, but the fielding is better this time at the cover point region. Marufa, the fast bowler, doing the job, restricts it to a single. Yeah, the youngster, fresh blood, evidence of commitment, giving it her all. That's what she does, one-handed collection, throw back in, was applauded by the bowler. Comes down the wicket and nicely played. Got some fingers to it. But this is good running between the Aussie batters and uh, just trying to up the tempo. Really seven runs. In fact, uh, eight runs of the 38th. 134 for six.
Betting first, Australia, 134 for six. 12 more overs to go. Sharna in for a second over. Slip in position. To George Overham. Played off the back foot, straight to that fielder at point. Nahida Akhtar there. She's also uh, got some overs left under her belt. Two to be precise. Watchfully played. Good line length from Sharna. Partnership is building right now for Australia. They're counter-attacking very nicely. The seventh wicket partnership right now. 22 from 35. They're looking for that single. And uh, it's what's noticeable is that Annabel Sutherland from the North Strikers and just showing her hand to George Everham that it's all right. I know three dot balls, but don't take too much pressure. It's fine. It's retained strike, and now she finds the gap. That this is where that bit of consolation from the partner is so important, but yet underrated at times. Yeah, you need to get that support and that understanding that this is new conditions for this Australian team. In the air! Is it taken? Or has it just dropped in front? No celebrations from the Bangladesh fielders. Uh, just gives the clue, perhaps. Just dripped and bounced before Nahida took it. Was an opportunity. Nonetheless, another one, another one. And tell you what, it's a very well uh, bowled over by Shaw now, only a single of it. We'll come back to it in the next over. 135 for six. Stay going on with Fahima Khatun, the leg spinner. George Everham off the back foot. Gives the strike back to Annabel Sutherland. Now, th that was an opportunity. And Chanu, we've seen a few go begging today. Yes, so far, it's fair to say Bangladesh have been on top, but this just gives you a feeling that it's not going to be a high scoring one. Comes down the wicket, hit it straight importantly, but good fielding of her own bowling. By Fahima, and then you know, 136 now, somewhere around 160, 170, or more than that. And again, I have to mention that if Australia managed to take early wickets, we surely have a game in our hands. Shamunna, I think this is a massive partnership for Australia. It could be a game changing, a match changing partnership between Annabel Sutherland and uh, Georgia Wareham. They're taking the score to a position where Bangladesh will think twice, thrice. Off the back foot, it was short, and I think she's got hold of it. Few bounces to the boundary from Annabel Sutherland. A few smiles, a laughs among the Australian batters in the middle also, but a welcome boundary nonetheless. Pounced onto that, saw the length being short and made up her mind to pull it with as much power as possible. Perhaps didn't get the perfect connection. Nonetheless, there was empty spaces in that square leg region, an easy boundary. Comes down the wicket, hits it straight. It's well played. See, so far, I think what she's done well, Annabel Sutherland, is that she's tried to play along the V, Try and play it straight, but whenever, like the boundary delivery, whenever things have been short, been quick to rock back. Transfer of weight. One more delivery to go. Six runs already of the Swahima over. Flighted. Tempting. She's not taking the bait. George Everham. Happy to keep it along the ground. 40 done with. Australia are 141 for six.
Sultana Khatun's done with the 10 overs, 2 for 42, 2 for 21 for Naida, still has two more. Marufa yet to bowl, four overs, uh, she's got left under her belt. Faima's got four, Shorna's got a few also. I think it's going to be Shorna, who's going to, here's Shorna. Inside out, finds the gap that's beautifully played by Annabelle Sutherland. Crunched through covers for four. Two boundaries in quick succession for the Australian team. One from the bat of Wareham, one from the bat of Sutherland. And we can see once again, just finding that gap. Just rose up on her. Bit of bounce, extra bounce from Shorna. Well dealt with of the back foot by Sutherland. The partnership, now the best one of this inning so far, 34 for the Australians. They're looking good now for something close to 200 even. Still opting for a slip for Georgia Wareham. Optimistic. Trying to play with the turn. And see, with top class sides, and which, which Australia certainly is, top of the table of the ICC Women's Championship, seven ODI World Cups for them in the bag. Yeah. There's no space for... Goal! Yes! The slip is rewarded! Outside edge, Shorna gets the break to a brilliant catch by Nahida. I think it was Rabia, in fact. Yes, Rabia takes a stunner in the slip cotton, and Georgia Wareham, she departs. They've finally broken the partnership. This was looking dangerous for Bangladesh and the Tigresses. They fought back once again. They will not let go. And we see once again Sharna giving the ball a bit of loop, turning sharply, and an excellent catch. Very, very good catch taken there at first slip. She had to dive to her left. Rabia, the leg spinner, and she did it to perfection. A very, very vital breakthrough for the Tigresses. She didn't have much time. She had to be quick. She was uh, onto it in a flash. And importantly, keeping and getting the basics right. Went for it with both hands. Grabbed it with both hands. And uh, this is what makes the difference. They needed to take a few chances. Take most of the, make most of the opportunities and... Uh, Rabia does it and Shorna gets her wicket and again Jyoti call paying off of bowling Shorna's th third over to manage to break that partnership you just mentioned commentators curse Shanur that this was the highest partnership so far Alana King is the new batter in but thankfully for Australia they still have Annabel Sutherland at the North Strikers end flighted Eyeing the stumps and sometimes, you know, once a, a batter goes, is out, you see the other batter follow. Bangladesh will be hoping for that. Flight it, trying to tempt the new batter. That, Come on, go after me. Not tempting enough, not taking the bait. 41 done with, 146 for 7. Couple of 20s and couple of 30s. At least Annabel Sutherland is still unbeaten. 37 of 51. It's fair to say quite a few batters got the start. But could not convert. Rabia, she got a brilliant catch. Is here to bowl. It's in there for a bit. She's not offering much pace. Annabel Sutherland. It will be interesting to see how she goes about her business now. That the partnership has been broken. Leg spinner, deep mid wicket, long on, long off. Deep cover. Crisp shot of the back foot. And misfielding. 
gifts Annabel Sutherland and Australia a boundary. Not the best effort there, the deep. And Sutherland, she's uh, moving on to the 40s as a result of that. Not a terrible delivery, to be very honest. She made room, played it off the back foot and played it late. Beat the player, two fielders in fact. And eventually, that's another boundary for Sutherland. Now she's getting a move on. 41 from 53 now. Oh! It was a sort of a leading edge. She was looking to play it on the onside. That part of the bat, but uh, luckily for her, did not uh, go all the way towards the fielder. But again, what, what Sutherland has been doing successfully is she's been playing it late, but not only that, she's been timing it precisely. Yeah, for that boundary as well, she waited for the ball to come onto the bat before she played it. And uh, Rabia. She can consider herself a tad unlucky to not be amongst the wickets because she has bowled very well yet to get that first wicket in this innings. Another single and now Alana King, she'll face the last delivery of this over. Another leg spinner for Australia and 150 comes up for the Aussies. 151 for seven. And the 42nd over. Just have a feeling it's still good, not going to be the easiest of chases for Bangladesh. You know, Australia definitely a top top side. Lana King in the middle is one of the spinners, and these spinners uh, will come in handy, they'll come in very, very handy for Australia. They've got a few all rounders, uh, got a fair bit of pace also so uh, we'll have to be quite cautious 42 151 for 7 and time for uh, change in commentary box Ahmed bin Parvez with Mahfuz Alam will join for the remaining 8 overs of this Australia innings Last eight, just 48 balls for Australia to negotiate. Will be a big question if they can play out the entirety of 50 overs. Nicely dabbed down, but can't find the gap. Annabel Sutherland, I think the Australian dugout will be looking at her and would want her to be in the crease at the 50th over if they have a chance of moving on to 200. That was an outside edge. Nicely flighted there by Sharna. She's been the X-factor for Nigar Sultana Jyoti coming in as the sixth bowler. Has really done well once she came in. Has a very fluent action when she bowls and gets a lot of drift. Puts in a lot of flight. Yet another flighted one driven down. Single for Sutherland as I welcome my co-commentator Mahfuz. And she's going for the 50. So far played 57 deliveries, scored 43, beg your pardon, 59 deliveries she played. And uh, now she is becoming the factor for putting pressure on Bangladesh side because she is scoring runs. She is putting runs on the board and she is putting pressure on you. So, Annabelle Sutherland, right now the X factor for Australia and definitely a headache for Bangladesh. Headache she is. She's back on strike. Annabelle Sutherland off of her brilliant 210 against South Africa in the one-off test earlier this year. Drives that down again. Has looked the part among all these Australian batters on display today. She had a lot of big names. Healy Perry, Mooney, and the rest. Quite a few 30-plus partnerships in between. That was flighted, but that was a full toss. Dispatched on to the boundary for the first six of the innings. Alana King smashed that. 
Yes, and they will welcome this six because this is the first six of this innings and uh, there was a flighted delivery. She got it perfectly and there was no mistake. Timed it. And this is 160 for seven Australia after 43. Annabel Sutherland, she will be really happy to get Alana King because she's also keeping up the momentum, which is really necessary whenever you have a batter in non-striking end where she is supporting you. It will be another thing that make you feel good. Yes, vibing off the good feelings right now, Sutherland and Alana, especially after that flat batted six that she struck in the last over. Rabia to continue. There's some rotation of strike there. Sutherland pacing her innings brilliantly. Well, that was turn. Sharp turn there from Rabia. Alarming signs. This is what you might expect when the Aussies come to bowl as well. We did not, we did not uh, see that much of turn from Rabia. That was a big turn that she got. Alana King batting with the you know 100 plus strike rate for the first time in this innings that we have seen. And this is 161 for 7. It's very much important to take the wicket of Annabel Sutherland for Bangladesh if they want to you know keep the momentum on behalf of them. Very, very important. And the longer she stays the bigger trouble Bangladesh would be in. This was full and straight. That's the spot that Rabia wants to hit on a consistent basis. She's been short on a couple of occasions. She's tried the googly, but that was quite short and easy pickings for the batters. She's been very good overall, finishing her spell. Another dead bat from Annabel Sutherland. It's moving towards yet another women's ODI 50. And this is tough for becoming, you know, for being the persistent for the leg spinners. And she's using her feet very nicely. That's why she's played that much of deliveries and scored, you know, so for 45. Because using the crease here in the wicket of Mirpur is very much important and you need to negotiate the spinners on, you know, going to the back foot. And she played it accordingly. A little bit of crowd gradually building up. Much hyped series here between the world champions Australia. The serial winners against the Tigresses from Bangladesh at home. We're here at the Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium, Mirpur. Crowd gradually building up this month of Ramadan. It's the last working day of the week. After the weekend tomorrow, but today is the day. If the Bangladesh Tigresses want to make history, this could be their moment. Alana King, she's not an all-rounder. Mainly she is a bowler. But uh, her supporting role to Annabella Sutherland is playing a big role because the tail is not being exposed because she is playing really outstanding. And keeping one end very tight. Yes, she is. Another drive into the gap. Scampering for a couple. That's very good running. Excellent running. Call taken up by Sutherland. She runs into the danger end. Subhana Mostari with a weak throw to the striker's end. The captain not happy. Very good understanding. Both the batters, they have 17 runs over from 21 deliveries. This time, step forward. And uh, it was a full toss. Played through long off region and will get a single. 166 so far. That is really good. Yeah, uh, looking back into what happened in Mirpur in ODIs. Played by the women's team last year. Oh, that was an extra bounce. Again, extracted from Fahima. 
That was flighted, looped, enticing Alana King to go for a big shot. What sort of a bounce was that? I think it hit the crack. And if you want to take the control, you have to purchase the wickets. Otherwise, Australia, they are taking the control. So, whatever you have done initially, that was good. Will be big appeal, but inside it, Gazi so well. He stays with his snort out decision. Lucky there, Alana King caught the inside part of her bat. It was a flipper from Fahima there. Ball did not turn out. Batter playing for the spin. Another play and miss. Brilliant over. Comes to an end. Fahima Khatun finishes off. So after 45, it's 166 for 7. You can hear the noise uh, from the gallery that is Bangladesh, Bangladesh. Crowds are there, yes. They have the crowd. They are cheering up the girls. They are doing really good. But Professor, what we, we were talking about, the initially Bangladesh took control of the game. They put pressure. It was going really good. But this is very important phase for Bangladesh if you want to take the control because if you leak runs here in this stage the control of the game will be you know go away so welcome back this is Marufa on his last spell looking at the over distribution she's not gonna be bowling her full quota of 10 seems she's gonna end up at 9 if she bowls from this end Marufa Akhtar started bowling from the Mipu Thana end, but now she's changed ends coming in from the media end. The only fast bowler in action for Bangladesh this match. She got the big fish. Australian skipper Alisa Healy edged that off Marufa. That was short, pulled away, but fielder's there. She's got some protection. This is the third power play. Five fielders can be patrolling the field close to the boundary line. It was Nahida on that occasion. Really is the department where Bangladesh team can focus to develop because today we have seen there are some fumbles, the missed catches, the you know the the fumble was there, the leaked round, so it has to be you know, very much accurate in fielding because through fielding you can also put pressure to the batters. You know building very tight no chance for the batter dot delivery good line being maintained by Marufa here we've seen her bowl the full length going for the Yorkers especially in the series against India when it was crunch time there was that infamous tied match where both teams were equal on runs, 225 from Bangladesh, 225 from India. It was a very famous tie last year in June. That was cut away and cut away nicely. Finds the gap, Alana King. Another important boundary for Australia. There was with an offer and she took that gleefully. This partnership looking dangerous now. We've seen Sutherland being part of couple of 34 run partnerships one with Gardner the other with Wareham and now Elena King and Sutherland putting up a very very important partnership at the business end of the innings Australia gradually moving towards that 200 mark which looks like a 300 par score in the context of the wicket context of the situation as we look at a few clouds over our heads Mafuz yeah, uh, that's what we were assuming at the very early morning that uh, rain might calm in the different phase of the day. So there is a possibility. 
Lana King, this is the fourth highest score. This is the fourth highest score that she has posted. And previously, 28 was her highest score. And I was really interested to see what is her highest score. And that is 28. And now this is her fourth highest. So you can understand that she actually doesn't get that much of opportunity to bet at the tail but today she got the opportunity she is showing that okay i can also do something for the team absolutely right and she gets another single driving it through the covers Svana mustari the fielder there 172 for seven the end of the over from marufa tad expensive lana king and annabel sutherland forging a very very important partnership here for Australia as we look at the bowling card for Bangladesh six bowlers being used the economies have in general been pretty good most impressive was Nahid Akhtar and she still got a couple of overs Jyoti will be thinking of bringing her back at some point and the reason behind the economy passed four plus that is uh, Sutherland, I guess, because she chursed and uh, she's still there. Scored 49 from 68 deliveries and if she stays there, it can be more dangerous. And we were talking about taking control. 172, very good impression on the board. But if they can put more, it will be really tough for Tigresses, you know, to take the control with the bat. Absolutely, and speaking of Naida, she comes back for her final spell. Has to make a difference here. First ball driven straight to the fielder. The momentum has shifted as we moved across the middle overs. Australia, through their middle and lower middle order, really piled up very important runs. And Bangladesh had the opportunity to kill the match off. Australians making good use of it. Was an appeal there for a run out. The umpire goes to the third umpire. This would be a very, very critical moment in the game. This partnership looked set. It's the umpire from India. Vrindarathi asking the third umpire to give the decision, TV umpire Moshe Ali Khan Shumon from Bangladesh, former cricketer, now in the umpiring panel, will have a job in his hand. Alana King and Annabel Sutherland really extremely well. Let's look at the replay. Ball drops into Jyoti's hand. Oh, that was a direct hit, but the batter was in. Looks like the batter could be safe, but we leave it to the third umpire for his decision. Pretty close call, as any direct hit would. The time where the bales got dislodged, for seems like the batter was in. For the first time for the third umpire, a tough time has come. And... Uh, he has to take a decision and the decision is not out. It's already given. So this is the 47th over for Australia and this is 173 for 7. Annabel Sutherland, she will be on strike. Will it be hard 50? Came down the wicket. Up is landed safely, and this is the second 50 for her career. Absolutely, very much important, and she will be delightful because today's situation was not that much easier, and she scored for the team. She really, really rose from the ashes. Annabel Sutherland ripping off her good form, showing a lot of continuity, getting the first 50. For the Australians in this series, Annabel King, uh, Elena King, beaten all ends up. Neither had to 
turn the ball enough just to beat the outside edge. Choti would be desperate for a wicket and she's gone to her premier bowler to do that. Again, right on the money. It's been a good over in general. Sutherland trying to cut loose. Ball falling in safe, but this 50 would give her a lot of confidence in these tough conditions. Just three singles from this over. Definitely a good over. And uh, this is 175 for 7 after 47. So just that one over for Marufa and Faima is brought back. Bangladesh need to stop the stem of runs. Lana King easily rotating strike. Being an excellent partner to Annabel Sutherland who look to go big. Just the last 17 balls of the Australian innings left. And there is a chance for them to score 200. Definitely, they will go for the big, but the captain, she is thinking to restrict the batters as much as possible. And uh, Marufa, she considered a boundary, that's why she didn't bring her back. And uh, she went with Fahima. <laughs> Was it a catch? Was it dropped? There is something. Alana King. She got the life. Absolutely that. And Nigar Sultana Jyoti hurt herself in the process. Has her gloves off. Doesn't look good for her. But she says she's fine. Physio doesn't have to come in. But I think more than hurting her finger, I think she's hurt from the inside. Because it could be an outside edge that she dropped. She's been so good behind the stumps. Bangladesh skipper so far today. Grabbed in a couple of catches. Completed a stumping as well. So that could be another missed opportunity for Bangladesh. Single through the point for Alana King. Has to be one of her best ODI innings. Because this has been testing conditions to bat for. And with that missed opportunity, some sort of irritation on your finger. As she's also... You're very dependable batter in the lineup, in the order. So the team will definitely want her in a very good condition. Annabelle. Oh, that is really superb. She shuffled and then slog sweep. Fantastic. But couldn't reach the boundary rope. But got two runs there, which is really important now. Because this is 48th over. And they will go with every delivery, you know. They will take every delivery on. So Sutherland has some plans. If it's full, she's going to go down the leg side, use the sweep. This time she steps out, inside out. Good looking shot for a single. She tried to take on the longer boundary down there at the cow corner region. Perhaps the biggest area of the boundary to clear, which is why it was cut off by the fielder in the deep but this partnership really starting to hurt Bangladesh now and it's definitely time to hit big sixes or fours or score runs they will try to go with every delivery but these two overs is really important for Bangladesh captain because if you concede 10 plus 10 20 runs it will be 200 and that will be sort of a psychological impact on your batters that okay the score is 200 or 200 plus but if you can restrict them below 200 there will be a psychological victory
Nahida in for the penultimate over of the Australian batting innings. That was close. That was close. A play and a miss from Sutherland. As I was saying, she was taking the risk, going down the sweep. This route giving her quite a few runs in this innings, but it is risky to play against the turn, especially against Nahida. And she was about to get her third wicket. And I was waiting for their celebration. She tried to pull it back. There is another misfielding. So fumbles, you know, licking runs. So that's what we, 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 we were talking about, that Bangladesh should concentrate, you know, on good fielding. And as we see, this is the highest partnership of the innings. 35 runs between Sutherland and King, taking Australia close to 200, which could be more than competitive given the bowling lineup that Australia have. The crowd building up here at Mirpur. Low full toss driven for another single. So the dot ball percentage has come down in a big way. The Australians still finding it hard to score those big boundaries, but they'll be happy that the scoreboard is ticking. And they will be happy with the partnerships that they made today. From the fourth wicket partnership, they scored really good. If I just prompt, if I just pronounce the numbers, there's 21, 30, 34, 34, and now 36, which is really good. In every wicket partnership, they try to build a partnership. They try to score runs, and this time she tried to go for a big shot, but missed it. She's heard us. Wants to go big. Alana King misses out this time. The only batter to hit a six, the only six of the match so far. Driven down to the covers. Tidy over from Nahida. Wants to finish it well. She's bowled a brilliant spell. Two for 27 from 9.5. Good delivery, forcing her to defend. And what was that? Missed again? Yeah. She was saying like that and saying, it's okay, no problem. After 49, it's 184 for 7, just 3 runs from this over. Down the wicket. Tried for a big shot. But this time she will get just a single. Definitely a good thing for Bangladesh. But remember, the run is 185. Which is a very good total according to the wicket. Anything 150 plus today is difficult for the team who will chase. Big, big over here from Faima. She did well so far that bit expensive compared to her other spinners stands her ground a solid base and a solid hit out of the park that was massive extremely important runs here for Australia Lana King mighty blow from her that was flighted but she waited for the ball to bounce in and rocked into her back foot the connection was pure Ball went all the way, a second six for her, a second six for Australia, and they move into the 190s. That is a pure class. What a back foot punch. She has the wrist power, and this is Alana King for you. Her second highest score. 28 was uh, her highest again, Team India, and now this is 24. This is the second highest ODI score that she made. Oh, what a shot that is. Will it go again? This time, bigger. It's another six. Coming into the party right at the end of the innings. Alana King winding up, scoring those big shots. Just look at that. It was full, but manufactured out of nowhere. She's got the power 
and she's got the timing as well today she really has done a lot of damage to the Bangladeshi bowlers and length was not adjusted whenever she went for the you know back foot and she got time and uh, she really got time to pull it away so Pahima has to be more clever struggling right now Fahima again this time she employs the slog sweep finds the gap again two fielders there just couldn't get it another boundary Lana King her highest ODI score you look at the length she really connects well again but two fielders there they should have stopped that waited for each other to take charge but none took charge in the end the ball just went through them jointly this is the highest score for Alana King absolutely mesmerizing what an innings that she is playing today 34 oh my goodness is it once again or will it be a catch no it's a six this is Alana King for you that is truly superb this is called wrist power what they have in the tail they have shown it clearly Alana King what a fantastic over they are producing here this is big this is massive from Alana King massive massive over massacre in the last over another one this is flat and this also goes all the way what an over for Australia and what a way to finish the innings the end of 50 overs they go well past 200 now this is a big big score from Australia the last over yielding four sixes all coming off the bat of Alana King desperate dive desperate jump from Naida ball skips her fingers goes all the way and after 50 it's 213 for seven Australia a massive massive eight wicket partnership from Alana King and Sutherland giving them a very very good position in the match at the innings break Mahfuz no doubt Alana King got her highest score in her career and uh, Annabel Sutherland she got her second 50 and put a very good total on the board and at the end that was a truly very good partnership from these two batters that was highly needed and what we were talking about the from fourth wicket partnership they got regular basis good partnership on the board and that helped Australia to put at the end of the innings very good total look 213 for seven but at one stage we thought it could have been 150 or 60 or Bangladesh had that possibilities but they utilized it excellent credit goes to the lower order batters absolutely looking at the scorecard 46 from Alana King that was massive an unbeaten 58 from Sutherland as well quite a few double digit scores there from Healy from Mooney as well struggled a bit though Gardner with a handy 32 but it was all up to the Sutherland King partnership that took Australia past 200 and a massive last over building 26 runs giving Australia a very competitive total at the end of 50 and Purvis very much surprising he restricted top five but lower four damaged this is absolutely outstanding this is good cricket and this is good cricket from a big team and uh, the champion team as well and this is the bowling card Marufa didn't finish her quota I surprise that she could have come at the end for the last over not the spinner as she was going back to the crease and having or using the wrist power so Marufa was not there and uh, that was truly a very bad over from uh, Fahima at the last over and she considered total 67 and on that over 28 a lot of runs conceded but the wickets column looks good for Bangladesh it looked good for them till the 40th over Rabia the only bowler without a wicket Nahida was excellent as usual and Sultana Khatun was the one who brought the initial breakthroughs Maru Akhtar got rid of Lisa Healy and at that point it looked like Australia would struggle to reach 
to a score of 170 or 80, but that massive partnership of 61 of uh, 67 of 56 from Alana King and Sutherland took the game away in the end. Look at the fall of wickets. Seventh wicket fell. The score was less than 150 and then came in Alana King. The discipline from Bangladesh was pretty good. Just the five extras in these innings. Bowling effort in general was good from Bangladesh. As we look at the match summary here, 213 for seven Australia. The unbeaten knock from Sutherland, 58 along with Alana King. These two really did the damage. The presence of mind was not there for the lower order batters as they were using the crease deep and the length adjustment was not that much good from the Bangladeshi bowlers and that chance was taken by the batters perfectly. They used the crease and uh, they went for the back foot and they, you know, rotated the strike and waited for the loose balls. They executed. That was truly superb innings from the lower order batters, especially Alana King and Sutherland. So after the break we go. Bangladesh would need 214 to win the first one-day international of the three-match ODI series against Australia women. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon.
ちゃったりね。
Welcome back to the Mirpur Shere Bangla National Cricket Stadium. First of the three ODIs between uh, Australia and the hosts, Bangladesh. Bangladesh, having won the toss, decided to field first, put Australia to bat first. Uh, they got a good start. 
courtesy of Sultana Khatun, couple of wickets, Maruf Akhtar then took one, then Naid Akhtar, Rabia Khan, Fahima and Shorna contributed well in the middle overs but Australia in the end thanks to the 67 run partnership between uh, Sutherland and Alana King they've put up a formidable total of 213 still pretty overcast conditions here in Mirpur and uh, from Bangladesh's perspective they'll need to get off to a good start and make sure they don't lose many wickets Australia on the other hand they'll be taking they'll be looking to take early wickets and uh, get most of the Bangladesh top order back in the dugout and make the most of the total they have on board which is 213 Bangladesh they need 214 to win the first ODI of the first ever bilateral series in which Australia have come to Bangladesh as part of the ICC Women's Championship joined by Ahmed bin Parvez Megan Shoot it's gonna she's gonna start proceedings for Australia the girls in yellow from the media end they have a slip in position swing an offer but down the leg overcompensating so but we'll start off with the wide start off with the extras and an interesting feel said by Elisa Healy there is a slightly widish shorter mid on and right like just a few steps away from her is a mid wicket that's nicely fended off the feeling of bat to ball the two openers for Bangladesh, Farzana Hawk Pinky, the only centurion in one day internationals for Bangladesh, and she reached that feat last year against India. Australians giving away their tactics in a way. The field that has been set, shoot going for the in swinger. This time gets the outside edge, the first wicket for Australia. An outside edge well taken behind the stumps by skipper Lisa Healy. Farzana Hawks stay in the crease. Is done. And Megan Shoot strikes in the very first over and gets rid of Farzana Hawk Pinky. The sole centurion in the Bangladesh side. And she's gone for naught. Without troubling the scorers. Not the start Bangladesh would have hoped for. And exactly what Australia wanted. Just a start for Bangladesh. Not troubling the scorers there, Pinky. Just look at the swing that should extracted. It was prodigious swing. Caught the outside edge. And what a take from Alyssa Healy behind the stumps. She was moving to her left and had to dive in the other direction. That was brilliant bowling and fielding from Australia, showing why they are the defending champions, the best team in the world by a landslide. Yeah, Megan should. She's uh, known for deriving some swing with the new ball early on. And as you can see in the background, the side screen, it's pretty windy. So uh, certainly helping Megan should. And Marufa, of course, the youngster, the Bangladesh seamer, also gets some early swing. But Megan Shoot making it count in the very first over. Mushida Khatun is the new batter in. She's in good touch. Another youngster, promising one, has uh, scored some good runs, good knocks in the recent past. She's been in good touch. Bangladesh is tour to South Africa. One of the ODIs, Murshida Khatun scored an 80-plus unbeaten knock as Bangladesh got a famous win against South Africa. The first ever they did. The first over, Bangladesh losing their opener, the most reliable, Farzana Hawk Pinky. 
He can shoot. Well, I'm oh. wide of the crease. Beats her outside off. That was a good delivery. Getting a lot of swing here. Yeah, some swinging off her just past the outside edge. There's a slip in position. Just for that. It's a offside heavy field. There is a gully, a slip, pretty close by. Point, cover point, cover, mid off. Outside the off. Well driven, but straight to the fielder. Couldn't find the gap. And despite all the crowd on the offside, there's also a deep third. <laughs> but well. Yes, if she plays it very late, Murshida, uh, she can get uh, the ball towards there. But I think they've done their homework. She does like to drive the ball, play of the back foot, which she did. So only a mid-wicket and a fine leg on the onside. That's Piran outside off once again. Testing Murshida outside the off stump. That's the end of the over. A lot of ones on the scorecard. It's one for one after one. So pace from both ends as expected. King Garth, right arm fast against Subhana Mustari. Hadn't faced the ball yet. Two slips for Garth. Beautiful outswinger. Completely beaten. All ends up. Welcome to the crease, Subhana. Well, she's the other opener who did not get the strike in the first over. Saw her uh, fellow opening partner make the long walk back. And the first delivery she faces was the peach of a delivery from Kimberly Garth. Full and straight again. Well driven straight. There is a gap. Gets a single. Sticks to that. Gets off the mark, Subhana Mustari. Lisa Healy. I think that long run towards uh, Kim Garth probably has some idea she wants to share. But, well, they're playing to the situation, discussing the field. And as we were discussing off the mic also, Parvez, that they've placed the slip, the gully, quite closer, quite shorter, if I may say. adjusting to the fact that there wasn't much bounce particularly somehow early on in the Aussie innings absolutely that's where analytics help that's where you make subtle adjustments in the distance if you are from the wicket skin guard comes in this time swings it the other way down the leg all these runs will be welcome by the Bangladesh side She's not afraid to pitch it up. Yes, it went down the leg. Now the defined leg is slightly squarish. It's not too it's not too fine because there's no other fielder on the onside guarding the boundary. It is the first power play, of course. So if he's, she's pitching it up, she can uh, flick it. This time she does. Nice glance down the leg. The ball races off and goes to the boundary. The first boundary coming from Murshida Khatun. Bangladesh moving in within the power plays, the first boundary. Yeah, right on cue. Because uh, what Kim Gard does is she gets the ball to come back into the left handed batter. And she was not, as per the previous two deliveries, she's not willing to give that room to Murshida Khatun outside the off. 
that made it easy. Pickings, all she had to do is just glance it fine for fine boundary. Can't overcompensate here. This is the perfect line. Well fended off by Murshida, looking confident, building into her innings. Well, yes, she's got that natural movement, Kim Garth. And I think one of the deliveries, she can just bowl and uh, keep it holding on to the line. That's when the slip and the gully will come into play. Yes, and that's what Alisa Healy would be asking for. She's kept that first slip pretty wide. And then there's the gully for Kim Garth. Again, down the leg, has to find her radar. The third extra run in the Bangladesh batting innings. And we've seen, in comparison, Bangladesh bowlers were pretty disciplined, just giving away five extras. This has been one of their strengths we've seen throughout the few years that Bangladesh have played competitive cricket. They don't tend to bowl a lot of extras, but here, Kim Garth looking for a lot of swing, missing the plot. This time, the ball holds the line, and it's a play and miss from Murshida Khatun. She's got her boundary from this over. Getting to be a pretty long over here from Kim Garth. She's got a pretty long run up as well. Already conceded seven. Murshida on strike. A nice glance, an important boundary get off the mark inside edge quick single taken that's the end of the over after two it's nine for one Bangladesh Megan shoot to continue. She shot through the first wicket. Got the big wicket of Farzana Hawk Pinky. Starts down the leg and then swings back onto the stumps. Well defended by Murshida. Ample swing. Visible in the air. Gets in naturally, does Megan shoot. difference between uh, when Kim Garth is bowling and Megan Shute is uh, at least what's noticeable now in terms of the field. Get back to that after that delivery. Bowling from wide of the crease. Nicely driven but straight to the fielder. Shamunai, as you were saying. Well, while Shute is bowling, there are two fielders on the onside. The deep fine leg. And uh, a mid-wicket inside the circle. When Kim Gart was bowling, there were three on the onside. That is because she got the ball to come back into the left-hander. And she, should gets it away from the left-hander. That's full edge stand dropped. That could have been number two for Bangladesh. But dropped in the first slip. Megan Shoot would be disappointed. Was a nicely delivered... Outswinger there. I think that's Gardner, Ashley Gardner, and the slip caught. No. Oh, just tentative, tentative yet again. But Mushida Khatun, beg your pardon, it was Beth Mooney in the slip. It was just dropped Mushida Khatun on five. Well, Mushida Khatun certainly will want to make the most of it. She Scored a 91 knock, 91 of just 100 in that match uh, in East London, December 16th versus South Africa. That's nicely flicked off the hips. Gets another single, Mushida Khatun. Yes, that was an unbeaten knock. Bangladesh created history in that match. Now the right-handed batter, Shubhana Mustari. And they feel 
you know, with her natural swing, this is the ideal thing. Give this try to the right-handed batter where the ball is coming back in towards the right-hander. Now, three fielders on the onside inside the circle. Last ball of the over, full and straight, well fended off, safely gets off the crease. So after three, it's 10 for one, Bangladesh. Kim Garth to continue as we look in the background, the ground staff preparing for any rain that could come. We could see a cloud cover, Shamunnoi. Yeah, there is a bit. At the moment, the wind is helping Kim Garth and Megan Shoot, making it easy for the Bangladesh top order. That's full and straight again. A beaten outside off. Murshida Khatun tried to fend that off but missed the line totally. That was a delivery that held its line. Kim Garth usually gets the ball to come into the left-hander. Pitched and straightened. Kim Garth in this over, the two deliveries, I think. She's hit the length. She's got the line better in comparison to the previous over she bowled. But the length, I think has been spot on from Kim Garth and is definitely bringing the slip into play. This time driven well, finds the gap, the ball's racing through the carpet and Murshida finds her second boundary. As they say, patience is virtue. Given the opportunity in the previous over and Kim Garth slightly errs in length, slightly over pitches and Murshida Khatun Leans onto it with flamboyance, crisp shot to get her first boundary. Second, in fact, brilliantly played. That was elegant from Murshida. This time again down the leg, going for that prodigious swing. Coming back to the left-hander, Kim Garth. Another extra. She's bowled two wides in the previous over. Again, you know, one delivery. I think line was not the problem. It was rather the length when it was a half volley inviting the batter over. She made most of it and she's back to that line again. That's full. Driven well. The timing was good but just couldn't find the gap on this occasion. Murshida Khatun, she might feel she's missed out on something. Yes, she might but I think as we observed even in the Australian innings, I think on this pitch, patience is going to be key. Don't lose it. It's a 200 plus total you're chasing. Team needs a big knock from you. Have patience, you'll get more boundaries. Again, nicely driven straight to the fielder. It's an action replay. Same shot, same fielder. Kim Garth keeping it tight. Yeah, in no rush. It's Murshida Khatun. Just on top of it, what I would like to see a bit more is maybe a bit more rotation of strike. It's the left and right hand combination in the middle. Make the most of that. Give some, cause some trouble to the bowlers. Make it difficult for them. Last ball of the over. Fended off nicely. And that's the end of the fourth over. It's 15 for one.
That's nicely bowled. Can full and straight. No runs on offer. It's interesting how the three fielders on the onside are placed inside the circle. There's one more on defined leg, but on the leg side, you know, apparently they're all parallelly standing. Just waiting for an uppish on drive. That was a nicely defended shot from Subhana Mustari. Just got the single. These two representing the transition of this Bangladesh women's side, which had Jahanara, Salma, Lata Mondol at one point. Now it's off to the youngsters. Outside edge fetches her a single, Subhana Mustari. This is something that Bangladesh would want to do a lot more. Although we looked into the power plays when Australia were batting first 10 overs, they found it difficult to rotate strike. Now Bangladesh facing similar consequences. Megan Shoot caught the only wicket so far. Farzana Hawk Pinky fell prey. Elegant looking off drive there. No runs. Yeah, punched off the back foot. You know, I think she's got a good offside game. She looks at comfort punching it, but maybe she needs a bit more beef. Keep it along the ground and find the gap. Now, uh, choosing to come uh, round the wicket is Megan Shoot. She's coming round the wicket, changing angle. That's nicely played. She had her eyes on top of the ball. Played a soft shot. Was more trying to guide that to third man. And then she shadowed one because the angle, there's that angle if it, if it is coming back into her and there's no protection on the onside except for the mid wicket inside the circle. Some good piece of fielding there to end the over. After five, 16 for one, Bangladesh. So it's still pace from Australia. Kim Garth with two slips this time. Nice swing. Subhana lets it go. It was actually very well bowled by Kim Garth. So it's, it was a good leave. Now there's two slip and a gully now for Kim Garth with Shobhana Mustari on strike. Two slips and a gully. There's a point, cover point. <laughs> Extra cover and mid off. So it's covered on the offside. Outside off again, well left by Subhana Mustari. And Shamuna, you were saying patience is key. It well, certainly is. But is she showing too much of it? Well, well, I'd like to answer this in a different way. Apart from the two slips, the keeper and the gully, the other four fielders are right on the edge of the circle so they want her to go for that shot that lofted shot which perhaps offers a catch that's left again so three dots came Garth keeping it out of range of the batter well I wouldn't say out of range she's rather putting it there and tempting the batter that go for it go for the lofted shot and in the process maybe you hit a boundary or two but in the process what if you give off a catch the ball is getting away, moving away, out swinging from the right handed batter, so the angle's not there. Till now, Mustari, she's been holding it off. 
see what goes off in the next ball. That's driven. Finally, back to ball. Is there a fielder? There's no one patrolling the third man region. An outside edge goes off to the boundary. This is boundary number three for Bangladesh. Yeah, tad bit fuller. Tad bit fuller from Garth. Open the face of the bat, but outside edge makes takes it away from Gali. But I'd give Subhana slight bit of credit for that, for opening the face of the bat at the very last moment, which made that angle and kept it away from the fielder at Gali. It's almost a test test match field setup. We don't see a third man near to the boundary. Two slips and the gully will fend it off again. Off to mid off. Go, good comeback from the bowler. The very next delivery, she goes full onto the pads on the middle and leg stump. In case she just misses it, she'll be vulnerable for a leg before. Not there, but these deliveries say maybe if she can just, you know, hit them straight for an on drive. Perhaps keep them along the ground, maybe two runs or, or a boundary. That's down the leg, slightly uppish, but we'll get her a single. A good single to rotate the strike. That's the end of over number six. It's 21 for one, Bangladesh. Target of 214, meaning Bangladesh need to score more than four and over. Currently scoring at 3.5. First ball pushed towards catching Midon or silly Midon, as you could say. Subhana Mustari got a boundary in the previous over. Megan Shute is a different kind of a bowler, predominantly swinging it in. That's outside off. It held its line and Subhana Mustari again puts out that big leave. There is a similarity in the pattern of how the two innings is moving forward, except for the fact that Bangladesh probably have lost lesser wickets. At least till now, Bangladesh certainly have lost less wickets. Was fully well. played again. Uh, they lost the wicket of Alisa Healy in the ninth over. Lost uh, Ellie Sperry's wicket in the sixth. So they were 20 for tw 21 for two, beg your pardon, 21 for two after six overs. Now Bangladesh 21 for one. So in terms of run scoring, it's uh, absolutely the same. Bitten through the gate there. What Bangladesh would need to be wary of is that Australia, they bat deep. Even though they'd lost six wickets in the last 10 overs, they managed to take 72 runs for the loss of just one wicket. They hammered the bowling. That has made a lot of difference in the complexion of the game. Flicked it down, soft flick, but still can't find the gap. Just makes me say, like, for 40 overs, I, I felt Bangladesh was on top. Last 10, that partnership in particular, Alana King, along with Sutherland. Annabel Sutherland. They made it count, that partnership, scoring 67 runs. So made an over from Megan Shoot. Ends the seventh over. Bangladesh women are 21 for one. That calls for change in the commentary box. Shanu Rabbani will be joined by Mahfuz Alam.
Thank you so much, SG. Shauna Ghosh. And at this moment, we've got a game on our hands. Bangladesh perhaps slightly behind the eight ball, having lost the early wicket of uh, Fargana. And uh, she went without really troubling the scorers. Farzana, she went without scoring. And a current partnership right now of 20. Bangladesh still require 193. They've got nine wickets in hand. The Aussies have been uh, bowling exceedingly well. Megan Schutt, the last over she conceded no runs and... In her four overs, she's conceded just three runs and also taken a wicket. <coughs> a very good afternoon to you, Mahfuz. Oh yeah, same to you. But uh, what about Team Tigris? They have to play really good here. And uh, do not think about 213. Just play your natural game and play according to the merit. That will be really important because what happened to the Aussie side... If you think that will be happen to you also, and the lower order, what Shomano and Ahmed bin Parvez were talking about, oh my goodness, whenever I was talking about staying on the wicket, staying about resilience, showing about the resilience, that time, she departs. Wicket down, Bangladesh will be in trouble. Ash Gardner bringing the breakthrough for the Aussies with her second delivery, taking the wicket. Bangladesh in early trouble now. Yeah, Mushida, uh, she has sort of ability to score big because uh, we know that she scored 91 versus South Africa. And uh, the team had a hope on her that, okay, you stay on the wicket. Maybe after a while you can maximize, you can score big, but Mushida departs. Now this is the time for the captain to come and to take the responsibility. There is the extra turn and bounce that did her in. She played it straight to the uh, first slip. Who was slightly behind and made sure she made no mistake. Beth Mooney with the catch there at first slip. And Murshida having scored 10 runs with two boundaries from 24 deliveries. She's gone. Bangladesh 21 for 2. Nigar Sultana Jyoti comes in. The captain played 44 ODI matches, scored 853 runs, has experience of, uh, you know, playing since 2015 and scored four fifties, no century. The only century girl, she is out. She can also put, you know, good score on the board. Absolutely, and immediately she's off the mark, perhaps. Uh, the umpire is signaling those as extras, I believe. So there was no bat involved. Yes, it's a wide plus the extra run added. Subhana Mustari and Nigar Sultana Jyoti, they'll have to build a partnership. Bangladesh. Having lost two early wickets, need to fight back from this situation to stay in this match. Yes, no doubt. That's the thing that you need now. You have to stay on the wicket, you have to be watchful, you have to respect to the bowlers. You just spend the time, your time will come. Absolutely. Another good delivery on this occasion by Ash Gardner. A very useful all-rounder for Australia. And we've already seen what damage Alana King can do with the bat. She's known for her leg spin. Idolizes Shane Warne. And she's really Alana's king over Bangladesh in the first <laughs> innings. <laughs> no doubt on that. Excellent footwork by the captain. She went back. Tried to use the crease, but couldn't find the gap. That was good. We were talking about Ashley Gardner. Very much experienced. She has 81 wickets 
and today that was the 82nd wicket. Oh, almost through the gates. Could have been wicket number three. Lucky to survive. There was that extra turn and bounce once again that did Jyoti in. It's a dot ball to end the over, but as we can see, coming around the wicket, getting purchase off the surface. And the extra bounce saved Jyoti on that occasion, or else she would have seen her middle and off peg broken. So eight overs gone, Bangladesh, 24 for two. Plenty of assistance from the surface for the Australian bowlers as we saw in the first innings with the Bangladesh bowlers gaining plenty of help from this wicket. But in the end, that partnership with Alana King hitting all those boundaries in the final over really shifted the momentum towards the Aussies and helped them post what would be a formidable total of 213. Extra swing from Megan Shutt, as we can see. There is assistance from the air and off the surface for the fast bowlers, and the spinner is making it turn as well. Another very important and key bowler for Aussies because She's also experienced campaigner, got 121 wickets, 31 years of age and second fastest female cricketer to reach 100 ODI wickets. That's really awesome. Yeah, records galore for this Australian women's team and if you talk about in terms of uh, depth and strength, this is one of the all-time great cricket teams in world cricket history, not just in the men's game, but women's game, everything all together. They've had so much success. And she's the first female cricketer to get two hat-tricks in two formats, in ODI and T20 as well, against Wendy's and India. To Megan shoot, she continues. Again, we can see some swing. The wicketkeeper doing something intelligent by bringing herself up so that the batter doesn't go outside her crease trying to get to the pitch of the delivery good thinking from the Australians they've adjusted to the conditions the first 40 overs they had to struggle a bit the last 10 they started to get a grasp and now you can see them doing wonders with the ball forcing the batter Negotiating the swing, staying on the crease. You cannot go outside, stay on the crease. Maximum, you can come back. You can get back. Just the one run from the first four deliveries. Migar Sultana Jyoti, she survived a close call in the uh, last over. It's difficult out there against such a high quality bowling attack. Again, a play and a miss. more important to stay on the wicket right now rather than getting runs in you know every single delivery Shobana Mustari she was talking about you know pushing the ball into the gap again this time down the leg side finally some pressure released that might be a leg by signal yes the umpire exactly shows us that and that's the end of over number 9, Bangladesh 26 for 2.
So if we compare after 9 overs, Australia were 29 for 3, Bangladesh 26 for 2. Seems neck and neck. But then what they did in the last 10 overs and that extra batting depth that the Aussies pose, that's where they are different from the other international teams. They've got a lot of all-rounders and a lot of batting plus bowling depth. Yes, rightly mentioned. They have uh, a lot of all-rounders and uh, a very deep batting lineup. And they made the difference today, no doubt. Bangladeshi bowlers restricted top five. But the damage done by the next four batters, the lower orders, Mahfuz, if you're a Bangladeshi supporter, are you praying for rain? <laughs> I think so. The supporters who are present here today, maybe, according to the situation so far, they are playing really good cricket. I think we should give time to them to have some runs on the board, especially. If they do not lose wickets, I don't think so. The crowds will be praying for the rain. Absolutely. Nonetheless, at this moment, with the cloud cover on, it is difficult for batting. Now, a big shot comes out. Finally, pressure released. Nigar Sultana Jyoti gets her first boundary. Very well played. Slock sweep there against Ash Gardner. And she's off the mark. As we can see, it was flighted. And Jyoti was very happy to see that go all the way to the boundary and as we are watching you know the fielders are in very close in position that area was really vacant and perfectly timed no mistake but this time it was a very good comeback from the bowler after the boundary 30 for 2 need to be more watchful it's that angle of uh, coming around the wicket that's uh, giving Jyoti some trouble and there you see the outside edge induced but just past the first slip and it'll run all the way for another boundary the second one in this over not a convincing shot but four runs nonetheless living dangerously but runs are coming that's the thing look at this she went for the front foot but edged could have been a catch in the slip she tried but not enough to grab it whole. So Jyoti now thinking about playing the paddle and the ball goes past the wicket keeper. It'll be wide plus four runs, so five runs in total. Proving to be an expensive over this by Ash Gardner. It will give a very good five to the batters. Some sort of relief because runs are coming and uh, you know, they are getting the confidence to stay there. Well defended, well watched. Jyoti moved across to get to the line of the delivery, which she wasn't doing earlier. And this time she takes that single. A risk-free shot, finally from the Bangladesh captain. She moves on to 9 from 13. Subhana Mustari back on strike. She's on 8 from 20. Bangladesh 40 for 2. Right arm off spinner going around the wicket. So Subhana Mustari. That's the length and the spot that she was trying for. Very good delivery to finish this over. But expensive. 14 runs from it. Excellent over for Bangladesh. After 10, it's 40 for 2. As we see the batting card, Farzana Hawk, Pinky going without scoring. And then uh, Subhana Mustari, her opening partner, she's not out on 8 from 21. Murshida Khatun. She's uh, gone as well, 10 from 24. And Nigar Sultana Jyoti, the Bangladesh captain, she's at the crease. Still plenty of batting left. Nahid Akhtar, Sharna Akhtar. 
they can wield the willow and at this moment they need a partnership from these two a big one rightly mentioned they need a very good partnership and they need a bigger contribution from both of them they need to carry this partnership they are getting runs and Shobana Mustari the opener played already faced 21 deliveries so another bowling change for Australia where I'm for the first time into the attack so leg spin it's a bit short but played nicely Nigar Sultana Jyoti on the back foot there is a fielder there short square leg as we can see the slip still in place four fielders on the offside inside the circle two on the onside and we see the front foot defensive shot coming out because it's all stump to stump where I'm attacking the stumps in her first two deliveries looking to skid the ball on rather than give it a lot of flight but nice gesture from the captain to defend this delivery it was a bit risky but played it nicely a paddle sweep going for the fine leg and uh, there is a field up there so rounds are coming there is a double but like you said that is a risky shot attempted by Nigar Sultana Jyoti she tried it in the last over and uh, she was lucky in the sense that the ball went for five wides went down the leg side but Wareham she's attacking the stumps again you can see not enough room to really cut it just pitching outside off and going straight with that line partnership of 21 from 20 Nigar Sultana Jyoti she has to be watchful lead from the front as Wareham continues that's the delivery that captain wants from you it was about to kiss the edge very much lucky unfortunate the keeper she also missed it and Bangladesh getting runs yeah, four more runs in fact so there must have been an outside edge because the umpire he signaled four runs Jyoti riding her luck in the last over the outside edge was induced and the same has happened in this over from the last delivery another run so Bangladesh moving on to 47 for 2 after 11 overs here is the bowling cut just look at Megan Schutz bowling figure five overs one maiden just considered four runs and a wicket economy is below one it's point eight zero <laughs> that is fantastic on the other hand Ashley Gardner considered 17 runs from two overs but took a wicket Megan has a shutout run scoring off her bowling It's been a good start from Australia, Bangladesh, losing two early wickets in the power plays. And again, we can see that angle being used. Nigar Sultana Jyoti and Subhana Mustari trying to form a partnership. Ash Gardner, she continues using that around the wicket angle. This time the ball not turning as much. And the captain she brings her front foot forward can defend the ball and play it along the line trying to bringing the ball in from that angle and it's causing these boundaries in previous over we have seen as well because she couldn't control that length and then line as well Wicket keeper missed, and that happened twice. Both occasions, boundary. It's the bounce. 
it's the bounce that is uh, doing the batters in and also the wicket keeper. The captain, Alisa Healy, might think of uh, putting a long stop fielder there because plenty of runs are being leaked from that region. This time it's a much better delivery aimed at the stumps. Anything that has missed the stumps down the lake side, it's uh, gone for runs. Not necessarily off the bat, sometimes via wide, sometimes via buys. Again, much better. 50 for Bangladesh came up via that uh, boundary. 51 for 2 currently. Good going so far for Bangladesh because at this stage Australia were 32 for 3. Bangladesh are 51 for 2. Runs are coming. They just need to milk the innings as much as possible. It's another over done. After 12, it's 51 for 2. Four bowlers used by Australia's captain. And oh, there is the outside edge, it seems. But no, not of the bat. That was a lot of turn and uh, probably hit the pad before it went to first slip. Good bowling. Haley, she was amazed to see that. And uh, look at that cut shot, back foot cut shot. And uh, she tried to find the gap. Offside packed field setup. Point, cover, point, cover, and mid off. Again, the outside edge fielded by Alana King. Yet to come on to bowl. Wareham continuing. So they've got two leg spinners in Georgia Wareham and Alana King. Plenty of variety for the Aussies. Again, on the stumps, Subhana Mustari. Playing it with soft hands. So far it's been a good over. No runs. And these two batters are really doing good. Because staying on the wicket. Defending the balls. That is necessary. Because the bad ball will come. And you will charge it. This is the way. And they are getting runs as well. Excellent from Shubhana Mustari. She was wearing. She was considering dot deliveries. And finally she got her ball. And charged it. He overpitched and played very nicely along the carpet through the covers for four runs. A welcome boundary for Bangladesh. Off the bat for a change, and again, this time it's a lot more fuller, almost yorked her. So, dot ball to envy over after 13. Bangladesh are 55 for two. You read 159 from 222. It seems really easy, but the tough task is you have to stay on the wicket. Yeah, uh, especially on these conditions, Mavos, uh, you have to really guts it out. And you have to ride your luck a bit. At this moment, the way things are going, Bangladesh will welcome a big partnership. Because at any moment, one wicket can bring about two or even more. Ash Gardner. And they are trying to create, create chances. And we have seen previously that bowlers are doing really good. Batters are leaving dangerously. Opportunities are creating. So they need to be watchful to stay on this game, to take the control. They have got a very good start, though they have lost two wickets. But after that, after all these, it's a very good start from Bangladesh compared to the Australia team, what they did within this 13 over. 
There was the reverse sweep attempted. I wonder if there was any bat involved. Went to the keeper and then fell just in front of the first slip. Nigar Sultana Jyoti bringing that reverse sweep and that paddle sweep out quite often in this innings. Looking to deal with the spin. This time played with a more orthodox shot. Full face of the bat being presented in front of the delivery. Ash Gardner, she's been among the wickets. One for 21 so far. You can see, oh, now is there the outside edge? The wicket keeper is convinced the umpire remains unmoved. Here goes the replay. She tried to play, going into the back foot. There was an appeal from the fielders. Sweep shot! That fielder is there. They'll get a single. And that's the end of another over. Over number 14 is done. It's a 56 for 2. Time for a change in commentary as well. As uh, Shaman Naghosh and Ahmed bin Parvez will be joining us. Thank you very much. Shaman Noy and Parvez back in. Mahfouz and Shanur went through that entertaining phase where Bangladesh putting up a fight back. First ball right away. Beaten the outside edge of Jyoti. That was flighted. Still can't pierce the gap. Shoti and Subhana Mustari both into double digits. Good partnership forging, Shamunna. He's played it late and beat the fielder. Will get a boundary. Nigar Sultana Jyoti. They're very fine. Square of the wicket on the offside. Waited for the delivery. It, it wasn't that short, but it's how deep into the crease she went. Just opened the face the last moment. That was brilliant from Nigar Sultana. That would give her a lot of confidence. Again, flighted. Bit of turn, but too full to trouble the batter. You mentioned the partnership. Just one short of 40 runs, so it's 39 now. Slip is still on for Wareham. This time finds the short cover fielder. Complimenting each other well, Nigar Sultana and Shobhana Mustavi. They have to make the most of it. Again, the same flight and same result to end the over. Tight one from Wareham. After 15, it's 60 for 2. Speaking of partnerships, Australia had one big 50 plus partnership that took them past 200. But to assist that, there were quite a few 30 plus partnerships as well. Sutherland being part of two of them. Here comes Selena King, destructive with the bat. She was part of that uh, 67 run stand with Annabel Sutherland. Was for the eighth wicket. Now she is here to bowl. Down the leg. Misses Healy as well. First leap has a chase in hand. 
Ball doesn't have the legs to reach to the boundary, but quite a few useful runs for Bangladesh through leg buys. Just plays the bat. Getting that edge. Side part and uh, going down the leg. Goes up past the outside edge but had a slight nick. Was that a catch being dropped? That is the big question. Couldn't reach the first slip fielder. Goes off for a bye actually. Didn't even touch the bat. Incredible turn from Alana King right away. This is impressive from the Australians. First one was off the pads as signaled by the umpire. Second one buys. Nothing on it. Finally, there's something, some defense, but far more in control was Nigar Sultana Jyoti. 21 of 38. She's on now. She has the leg side to access, and that's what she does. She sips well. Gets a single to herself. She does uh, like to sweep the ball. She's particularly good square of the wicket, but remember... Uh, how she got the winning runs when the match went to the super over against Pakistan straight coming down the wicket. Massive turn. <laughs> Look how far it has gone. It has uh, gone to Beth Mooney, I believe, in the slip cotton. It's gone uh, tell her, but yes, it's not a wide. Brings a smile, wry smile on the bowler's face, all the players and even the on-field umpire, Gadi Sohel. I got a bit confused whether to call it a wide or not. This time again, right on the money. Beautiful flight. Todd Ball to end another impressive over after 16. 64 for two. Here's a look at the scorecard. Pinky missing out. Subhana Mustar is still in the crease. 12 of 21. Moshida Khatun got past double digits but couldn't make it big. So Wareham comes in. She's got bowling style quite reminiscent of the late legendary Shane Warren. Nigar Sultana has a 50 against Australia, but that was in a different format. Sweeps away for another single. Trying to lessen the number of dot balls being played. That was the big problem for Australia in the middle overs. They kept losing wickets as well. So one thing Bangladesh has done much better in this run chase is to keep wickets in hand. It would come in handy in the end. Got beautiful cut shot there from Subhana Mustari. Races pass for another boundary there. Bangladesh making a good comeback in this run chase. Yeah, deep into her crease was Subhana Mustari. Nicely cut away. Importantly, along the ground. Flight to delivery. Fade. This time plays it straight to the fielder. Yes, uh, Georgia Wareham. She played for uh, RCB Women, the champions uh, of the recently concluding Women's Premier League in India. So uh, she's tasted some success recently. The fielder. One of the fielders has been pushed back. There's a sweeper now on the offside because of how she likes to play it square on the offside. Shabana Mustari. We're um, trying to keep it tight. Conceded five in the over already. Make it six. Was a quick single taken to end the over. 
After 17, it's 70 for two. So as we look at the final equation here, Bangladesh still need 144 to win this game. They have 33 overs in hand, 70 for two after 17. Things looking much better, especially after that disastrous start. The Pinky cut out for naught. Nigar Sultana and Subhana Mustari, the two right-handers forging a pretty decent partnership now. Partnership of 49 and also aided by a lot of extras, must be said. 20 extras in total in this inning so far. So 50 runs from the bat and then 20 coming from extras, helping Bangladesh's cause in this run chase. Back after the drinks break, Jyoti and Subhana Mustari, the partnership on 49, Bangladesh 70 for 2, as we went into the drinks break, Alana King, chief destructor with the bat, the ball in her hand now, She's previously bowled just one over and teased the batters outside off, she has a lot of guile about her leg spin. Can't find the gap there, Subhana Mustari. Mustari now 17 of 36. Quite often, after a drinks break, we see lapse in concentration. Bangladesh would hope not. There was no single in offer. Good call from Jyoti. She's keen to get off the strike, rotate the strike. The intent is right. But what Jyoti is doing correctly is constantly talking to her she's not moved there is a g big gap behind square and that's where she wanted to go but the ball goes and crashes onto the stumps instead subhana mostari right after the drinks break has to depart and alaina king gets her wicket right on cue just said it as cliched as it sounds how many times have we seen right after a break that a partnership has been broken? And I did say that Bangladesh would hope not, but they've managed to take the wicket of Shobhana Mustari round the legs, wrapped around the legs. Full delivery flighted. She was down on one knee looking to sweep it. 
But in the process, Leck left a tad bit of the leg stump exposed. And Lana King just made the most of that and hit the leg stump bullseye. Breaks the partnership on 49. That is a proper leg spinner's wicket. Bowling the batter down the leg, enticing her to that sweep. It was too full for her to do that. And she had to suffer the consequences. Subhana Mustari gone for 17 of 38. Alana King having a field day in the first ODI between the two sides. This is the three-match ODI series followed by three-match T20 series. First ever between the two sides, defending champions Australia against hosts Bangladesh. Full toss, aptly punished, but there is a fielder in the deep. So Faima Khatun gets off the mark right away. Could have maybe done better with that. That was a freebie, a loose delivery. Alana King this time round gets lucky. She's already picked up a wicket in this over. Nicely fended off. Jyoti still showing a lot of resilience. Well, she has to. Well, that's uh, where the Bangladesh hopes would lie. Checking the field out was Nigar Sultana flighted. Well, what happens is the weight of the responsibilities doesn't allow her to take the risks now. At least not now. It's a beautiful over by Lana King. The it has brought a breakthrough. A wicket and a single of it. 71 for 3 after 18. So finally, it's the time for Ellis Perry. It took 18 overs for her to come in center stage with the ball. One of the best all-rounders of modern day women's cricket. Did not have a good day with the bat. Got out cheaply. Caught in the slips. She'll try to contribute with the ball as she has always done. Part of that Royal Challengers Bangalore champions of the Women's Premier League. First ball, tad bit wide. Fahima flashes at it, couldn't connect. We are prompt and uh, proactive captaincy by Elisa Healy. Broken the partnership in the previous over, new batter in. And goes for the all-experienced Ellis Perry. Step in position yet again. So gives her the slip. Particularly for the new batter Fahim Akhatun who's on strike. Mid-wicket and mid-on. Inside the circle on the onside. Defined leg of course. Point cover, point cover. Mid-off. Inside the circle on the off and deep third. It's been bowling length so far. Oh, that's right on the money. Big appeal. The umpire unmoved on that occasion. The on-field umpire, Vrindarathi from India, was not interested. I think, uh, just have a feeling it was closer than it looked. Bit of movement, but extra bounce. Is the extra bounce, even though it was the back foot, is the extra bounce that and that angle that uh, persuaded Vrindarathi to give the decision against the bowling side? 
That was a low full toss. Fahima softly drives that back to the bowler. It's an interesting feat. Uh, congratulating Vindarathi, if I'm not wrong. It's, the f it's her first uh, bilateral series for an Indian woman umpire in which India is not featuring. Outside of India, of course, so she's here doing this uh, Australia Tour of Bangladesh series. Featuring in this match, and so far, she's been uh, on the spot, pretty accurate. She's still not giving away anything, Elis Perry, as she always does. Such a competitor, has shown a lot of resilience, played for the Australian national football team, was a goal scorer in one of the World Cups, and has... An almost legendary career as a cricketer as well. You know, one of those gifted characters. And you excel in almost every sport. And I wouldn't be surprised if we go and uh, get the opportunity to have a chat. That I'm sure uh, she's pretty good at some other sports also. Absolutely. I think uh, that is more probably the case especially for an athlete like her. That was a slower one. Change of face. Is there an opportunity? Oh my goodness. A comedy of errors. Amplified by that direct hit. And another wicket falls for Bangladesh. This was unfortunate, but the mix-up resulted in a run out. Just what Bangladesh did not need at this moment. Faima Khatun has to go. That was a slower one. She played a nice drive, but look at that effort there. Brilliant fielding. Shied the middle stump. Caught the bullseye. No chance for the batter to come back. Jyoti did not respond to the call in the first place. It was too risky. There wasn't a single in the first place. Fahima had to pay. Another wicket gone for Bangladesh. Wicket number four. This partnership did not move in the direction Bangladesh Tigers has wanted to. So just after the break, Shamunnoy, it's just one run and two wickets. Again, as they say, sometimes one gets two. But it's uh, all credit to the fielding. I believe it was uh, Phoebe Litchfield. Diving to her right, collecting the ball on her right hand straight away and direct throw. A bit of a confusion because uh, Fahima Khatun was going for the single. Jyoti wasn't too sure. But above all, she collected it promptly. Not only saved runs but had a direct hit at the striker's end. So two wickets, two back in the hut, 71 for four, Lana King. That was slow and it turned a bit. Nigar Sultana could not find the middle of the bat. Stranded in one end, it seems, losing partners right and left. This time goes for the drive, gets an easy single, walks into it. 72 for four, Bangladesh still needing a lot more. Yep, Ritu Moni is the new batter. In at number six for Bangladesh. 72 for four. Still need 142. They've got six wickets in hand, but they don't bat as deep as Australia does. That would be a worry. Ritu Moni is already in there. Sean Akhtar still to follow. Nahid Akhtar. Maybe Rabia also can bat a bit. But apart from that, it's not much hope. And all this, provided Nigar Sultana Jyoti carries on and plays a long knock. Now, for how long do you defend? If you're not taking singles or rotating the strike, it's going to build up pile of pressure. Whether you're going to take chances or not. That's exactly what's happening here, Alana. 
putting in a lot of dot balls, putting in some pressure onto the new batter, Ritumuni. Oh, that was massive turn. Ritumuni lucky to survive that, almost unplayable. The end of the over, Bangladesh 72 for 4. Chasing a target of 214, Bangladesh in a challenging state, 72 for 4. Shawana Mustari got a start, important partnership with Nigar Sultana, they put a 49 together right after the drinks break. They lost uh, her wicket, followed by Faima Khatun's run out in the previous over, Ellis Perry bowled. As Jyoti on strike, Ritumoni at the non strikers. Jyoti is on 24 of 45. They'll certainly require something special from these two in the middle and the ones to follow if Bangladesh had to make history. Still pretty far fetched for Bangladesh. Nilis Perry, as you mentioned rightly, hasn't given anything away so far. Full, straight back to the bowler, first over was a maiden bowled by Ellis Perry, they did not take a risk, yes new batter in. So amongst the batters that are yet to come, there's Sharna Akhtar who has got batting prowess, there's Nahida and Rabia as well but after that there's not much left as mentioned previously so Bangladesh really need this partnership to stay put just back of a length nicely tucked away she does like that length and that uh, allows Jyoti to take a single and give Ritu Muni the strike who's uh, off yet to get off the mark we've seen uh, quite a few variations in the fast bowling department for Australia we've seen Megan shoot Getting the ball to swing prodigiously. Same goes for Kim Garth, swinging it the other way. And Ellis Perry, more of the hit the deck kind of bowling. Oh! Just slightly fuller, slightly fuller. It's a new batter. And hence, the slip is also in place. The ideal delivery was such a field in place. Her feet were nowhere actually, she did not move front, she did not rock back, that could have been very close, she's just getting her sights in and to face Ellis Perry in this moment, can't get worse than this for Ritu. Steaming in, well, this got, us, uh, got her tail up, bent her back. On that one did Ellis Perry. Fielder apologizes for the throw. Megan shoot on that occasion. Saying sorry to the captain. Well, the standards that Australia set. The bar is up there. Defended. Single not there. So after 21, Bangladesh are 74 for 4. And it's time for another change in the commentary box. Uh, time for uh, Shanur and Mahfuz to join in. Thank you so much, Shauna and Parvis. At this moment, Bangladesh once again in a spot of bother, having lost four wickets 
within 21 overs. Ritu Moni and Jyoti. They've got it all to do. Alana King. She's been ruling over the Bangladesh team with the bat. And now <laughs> she's also gotten a wicket. Just the three runs from her first three overs. And she starts off with a very lovely delivery against Ritu Moni. Yes, and she's not done yet. She has done with the bat and now it's time with the ball. And mainly, this is her main job. And yeah, she's got a beautiful action. Very orthodox leg spinners action there by Lana King. Tries to model her game after the great Shane one. Oh, and there you see some extra turn on that occasion. Ritu Moni, before she got her bat to it, the ball spun away. Almost raced away from her bat. Played 26 ODI so far and got 37 wickets. Definitely a very good bowler, no doubt. Oh, look at that. Turn and bounce. Sort of unplayable for the batter. Absolutely unplayable for the batter on that occasion. It's too good. Flight, turn, bounce, everything you want from your leg spinner against the right handed batter. And Ritu Moni, she's played 10 deliveries, scored only one. This time she gets bat on ball. It's another dot delivery nonetheless. Five dots in a row from Alana King. She's looking for another maiden. Bowling very much accordingly. In slip cordon, you see there are two slips. And after that, point and cover and extra cover. And bowling just accordingly. Look at that. She is amazing. She's done with the bat and now delivering with her golden arm. 74 for 4 after 22. Bangladesh require 140 runs from 28 overs. They've got only 6 wickets in hand. Current run rate is 3.5, just about 3.5, 3.36 and required is around 5. This is the first one day international match, the first of 3, the first ever bilateral series between these two teams. Thanks to the ICC ODI Championship, we get to see this. And then three T20s will follow. Elise Perry back into the attack. And bangs one in short. The umpire reckons it's uh, too high. Going to be a wide. So an extra run. That's an area where Australia would look to improve on because they've given away 23 extras. That's 13 wides now. Three leg buys and five buys. That's like a dream for the batters. They are facing Ellis Perry for so many reasons. Front foot defense. Living legend, we can say. Ellis Perry, 163 wickets. Best 7 for 22. Yeah, you talk about your Sir Garfield Soberses, your Jacques Kellises, and in terms of great all rounders in cricket, Ellis Perry's name will be up there with the all-time greats. Definitely the greatest all-rounder the women's game has ever seen. And she's an all-rounder in all facets. She can also play football to a very high level and she's represented her national team in uh, two World Cups, the football and the cricket World Cup. So she is a true all-rounder, Nigar Sultana Jyoti, having to deal with the last delivery that was pretty fast and it came back. Now, the difference between Elise Perry and the other bowlers is the other bowlers have been getting movement through the air. She's getting it to move off the surface. She's banging it in and looking for something. Once again, a fuller delivery. And now, does the umpire budge? He goes upstairs to the third umpire. They think they've got the big wicket of Nigar Sultana Jyoti. And Shanur... It doesn't look good. Maybe. So we have to wait for the decision of the umpire. But now is the time for Mr. Mushra Ali Khan. Look at that. Uh, she was just seeing a single stump, the zero angle. 
there was a bit of misunderstanding there. The decision has to be made by Murshid Ali Khan, former cricketer. This He's looks very Padampa. tight. Um, <laughs> to the naked eye, it felt like she was short. Uh, but it's not the Bangladesh captain though, not Nigar Sultana Jyoti. It's Ritu Moni who's at the non-striker's end. Once again, let's see if the replay is conclusive. Nothing conclusive so far. If we don't get a slower side-on angle of this, a side-on replay of this, probably the benefit of the doubt will be with the batter. Now, this time. Her bat is still in the air, not grounded. The stumps are close to being hit. Finally, the stumps are hit and it seems like her bat is in the air when the stumps are hit. Mahfuz? But I think this is the call of Moshad Ali Khan and yes, the red light goes on and here is another wicket. This is absolutely unfortunate, sort of a misunderstanding and couldn't get back on time. The bat was in the air. And finally, they got another wicket through the direct hit. That's two run outs now. Faima Khatun was also run out by Phoebe Litchfield. And now we see some excellent work there to get the wicket of Ritu Moni. Now these run outs will be costly for Bangladesh and they'll look back in this innings and think how things could have been different had those run outs not happened. Elise Perry. Both the runouts have occurred when she's been bowling. Ritu Moni, she was uh, trying to support her captain, you know, staying in one end, and she consumed 13 deliveries, but, but very much unfortunate because in this stage, what Bangladesh needed, that was a partnership, a big partnership. But it's getting ended. Yeah, very unfortunate. But that's the difference between the world champions, Australia and Bangladesh. Short and wide this time. Elise Perry is her second wide in this over. That's one area where Australia will look to improve upon in the second match and in the series moving forward. That's the phase you can compare to the Australian batting lineup. That what happened to Team Australia? You took early wickets, top order. You if if taken the wickets, but the lower order did their job. But here for Bangladesh, can the lower order do that job? What they did? Another good delivery by Elise Perry. And yeah, absolutely, Mahfuz, you're talking about a lineup in Australia where they almost have 11 batters and all of them can hit, especially lower down the order. We saw what uh, Ash Gardner has done in the past, in the recent past, and then all the other players that come after her, Alana King today with the bat, she showed her batting prowess. They've got Elise Perry at, uh, in the middle order, so we've got so many good players, so many world-class players, some world-class all-rounders as well and it's the depth that sets them apart you get six seven wickets and you still have to deal with batters that can do damage at the very end of an innings and that's what happened today as well Australia any other team apart from Australia and they'd be bundled out for around 150 Lise Perry continuing with her good work so wicket in this over 23 overs gone, 76 for 5 Bangladesh.
It should be Alana King and uh, here she is on his uh, fifth over. So far she did four overs, got one maiden, considered just three runs and got, got a wicket. She played like T20 with the bat with 148 strike rate today and just smashed 28 runs from boundaries and over boundaries at the last over and in total 46 from 31 deliveries with five sixes she was superb with the bat and now doing her job with the ball you mentioned five sixes now that's a very telling stat and most of them came in the last over it's one over that changed the game completely, changed the complexion of it and took the game almost away from Bangladesh. It'll take a miraculous effort from here on in to get something and Al Alana King is bowling like a dream. Fantastic work there. She's not giving away anything. And just think about it, Mahfuz. You look at the bowling lineup that the Australian team has. She's their fifth choice bowler, and the sixth choice bowler is Elise Perry. So that's the depth that the Australian team possess. And still, they have more. <laughs> there is another one into the line, and it's maintaining very good line and length, not giving that much room to the batters to open up. This is a sign of a very good bowler, and that is what she is doing. On his fifth over, consider just three runs. Another maiden for Alana King. That's over number five done for her. Just three runs conceded. Bangladesh after 24, 76 for five. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, the captain, still there. Faced 55 deliveries and scored 25 rounds. And uh, she is searching for hope at the non striker's end. Will there be anyone to have a very good partnership? You know, to carry the partnership. It's really important. Do not think about the runs right now. Just stay on the wicket and go ahead. Elise Perry with another good delivery. Nihar Sultana Jyoti. Now we talk about batters getting set. And we've seen throughout the day where batters, when they get set, they're not really set. We saw that with Alisa Healy. She got out for 24 from 39 deliveries. We saw that with Beth Mooney. She scored 25 from 64. Ash Gardner, she started to get a move on. 32 from 38 got out. Another good delivery by Elise Perry. The only one who made it count was Annabelle Sutherland, 58 from 76. She stayed not out till the end. And Alana King, 46 from 31 deliveries. So that was the difference. The last wicket for Australia fell when they were 146. 146 for 7. Any other team, like I said, would have been all out for around 150, 160. But Australia, they've got so much depth, they scored 213 in the end. And especially all-rounders. There is another chance. Direct hit could have been gone. But survived again dangerously. Because Team Australia, they have already got two wickets through the direct hits we talked earlier. And there was another opportunity. That's what pressure does. Loads of dot balls. The last over by Alana King was a maiden. Three dot balls in this over, and now you see she was nowhere at that moment. <laughs> and had there been a direct hit, that would have been three run outs in this innings. And all from the overs of uh, Elise Perry, she continues. Very good bowling. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, beaten all ends up. As I was saying, you're never really set on this wicket. And you were talking about the bowling lineup and the batting order. You were saying that they have a very deep batting lineup. They have 
so many all-rounders and that's why they have two more options if they want they can bring them in one is Sutherland and another is McGrath both are the seamers they are still waiting for the captain's call hello <laughs> exactly oh, when their captain uh, decides to give them an opportunity only time will tell you have to keep in mind a lot of these players they played in the WPL and we heard yesterday their captain uh, Alisa Healy talking about the level of energy, the batteries of different players being at different levels. So they're going to ease the players in. Some of the players who have played a lot more probably exerted a lot more energy in that uh, recently concluded T20 franchise tournament might be eased in. This is another thing that they have many options for the captains. They can utilize in different way. It's not necessary that one bowler has to bowl 10 overs. They can preserve their energy as well in the match. And what I was talking about, the two more options. Annabel Sutherland, 29 matches she played. She has 30 wickets. Athalia Magra, from 36 matches, she has 25 wickets. You cannot say they are not good bowlers. Absolutely. And you see the bowling here. Megan shoot with five overs, four runs and one wicket. Ash Gardner, another pick of the bowlers, four overs, uh, 22 for one. And Alana King, five overs, two maidens and just three runs. And she is going to continue with her leg spin. Another good delivery. Not giving anything away to the batters. It's been a hard graft for Nigar Sultana Jyoti. She's faced 61 deliveries, scored 26 runs. Doing her job in a very good manner. Flight of delivery, turn, front foot defense. Everything is in very... She's doing that with accuracy. That's why batters did not get that sort of chances to, you know, score runs or to find the gaps or, you know, improvise. There is no other chance right into the money and you can tell there's a lot of pressure right now after that last wicket two runs from just 18 deliveries so just the two runs from 18 deliveries that will pile on the pressure on the batters finally a run off the bat that two from an inside edge but regardless a run against the bowling of Alana King her bowling figures, 5.4 overs, one wicket, just the four runs she's conceded so far. Excellent. This is truly excellent. And uh, she's passing a very lovely day today with bat and ball, having a very good performance. And uh, she was the factor that Australia posted 213 runs on the board, 48 from 30 deliveries. This time it's driven. Finally some runs. Might not go all the way. Just stopped near the edge of the boundary. So three runs taken from the final delivery in this over. Four runs of the Alana King over. A rarity. So Bangladesh ending with 81 for five after 26 overs.
So Mahfuz, you were talking about the bowling options that Australia still have left. They might think of making a few changes, but then again, plenty of uh, overs left to bowl for the likes of Kim Garth, Elise Perry. Bangladesh still miles away from that 214 run target. They've only scored 81, having lost the five wickets. And I was talking about Kim Garth. Probably she's back into the attack. Sean Akhtar on strike. Three from eight. Front foot defense. A dot ball to begin this over. And it's the number of dot balls that are right now starting to pile up and put on pressure for the hosts. Yes, definitely, because wickets are down, so they need to repair and they need to stay on the wicket. So, and after that, they were waiting for a delivery to play, flicked it away. It was very close to the boundary row, but got two runs. That's really nice that runs are coming from the bat. On her first pale, she was expensive, conceded 18 runs from three overs. Let's see, what does she do on her second spell? Again, played on the onside. A quick single taken. There was a fielder there. Shit. Shit. What happened? What happened? There is an appeal for the run out. I think the batter, she was a bit lazy when she was completing the run to ground the bat. She made the lead. They think so. But what umpire thinks? Let's go to the upstairs. Yeah, and I was just about to mention that I thought it was good running initially. Oh my goodness, she did not plant her bat. And the foot probably isn't down on time as we can see the stumps being broken. And her foot is still in the air. Why would you not <laughs> ground your bat? That is a massive question. And she's already started to walk. Yes, you can say it. Another wicket down. And this time, this is the captain of Bangladesh, Nigar Sultana Jyoti. That was really lazy effort. You cannot do it. Because your wicket is really precious in this stage. You will try to be there, you will try to score some runs, you will try to repair the damage, but you were very much lazy whenever you were completing the run. Didn't try to ground the bat. What do you think? Completely sort of a brain fade? Completely. Or she thought forward. there will be no attempt from the fielder. And that pretty much sums up Bangladesh with the bat today. They've had their moments but never really got set. Some of the wickets, they've been soft dismissals. And I was about to talk about the over breakdown because after 27 overs, Australia were 83 for 5, Bangladesh 81 for 5. So not much in it. But now, that's another wicket lost for the hosts, and it's the most important one. Shanu, just see the surprising things. The most surprising thing, six wickets are down, three from runouts. Yeah, it's uh, You could have saved those that. wickets. You could have uh, saved those wickets indeed. It's a shocking stat. And there could have been more runouts. Keep in mind, there were other opportunities as well. That's an area that the coach, Hasan Tilakaratne, will definitely be working on and drilling the girls hard. 
at this moment Rabia Khan is the new batter in the crease she's faced two deliveries yet to get off the mark Kim Garth that's the fourth over she's into yet to take a wicket not that much experienced just 19 years of age played 10 ODIs and mainly she's a bowler so let's see what does the tail do 27 overs gone 83 for 6 Bangladesh Alana King back into the action for her seventh over. Considered just seven runs and got one wicket. The performer of the day, you can see it without any hesitation. Yeah, absolutely. She's uh, edging closer to winning that player of the match award. <laughs> Continues her good work into her seventh over. Before this uh, series began, in fact, uh, there were a couple of players I was very interested to see how they do, and one of them was Alana King, the leg spinner. And she hasn't disappointed in the first match. Obviously, there's a lot of hype and aura surrounding Elise Perry, the legend that she is. But Alana King, you watch out for her because she's going to be a massive threat in this series moving forward with bat and with ball as we saw. Another dot ball. She's into her seventh over, given away just seven runs and also has a wicket. Shown some heart to step forward and to play a big shot against Alana King. What else can you do right now? Sure, not there. Yeah, the sun is shining right now and it's shining bright on the uh, Australian team who are in all yellow. And again, another good over. Another maiden by Alana King. Bangladesh ending the 28th over. Eight Three for six, and there will be a change in commentary with Shomon Nai Ghosh and Ahmed bin Parvez joining us. Kim Garth bowling from the media end it's a challenging task ahead an uphill one certainly for Bangladesh 83 for 6 4 wickets in hand Kim Garth uh, no wickets for her not today yet Rabi on strike she'll have to be careful exposed uh, the leg stump on field umpire Vrindarathi thinks uh, she was wayward down the leg it was very challenging task Parvez and uh, as we were talking and when our fellow commentators were on that it was the 17th over as you rightly pointed out when uh, the teams went for the drinks break there was an interval and we mentioned that Bangladesh will have to apply caution as right after a drinks break we see laps in concentration that's when Alana King was bowling the leg spinner and she managed to hit the wickets of Shubhana Mustari bowled her out 70 for 
70 for 3. So there were 70 for 3 in the 17th. Now this is the 29th over. So uh, uh, 16 runs added in the 11.3 overs for the loss of 4 wickets. Yeah, and if the journey towards victory for Bangladesh was a vehicle, Alana King and Ellis Perry in the middle overs really punctured the tires. Was driven straight to the point fielder. Bangladesh finding it really hard to even craft for the singles at this point. They've been scoring less than two runs and over for more than ten overs so far, Shaman Noy. And above all, out of the six wickets, three of them were runouts. I think that's that's going to trouble Bangladesh. That's going to haunt them in their sleep. Kim Garth back into the attack. That was nicely driven. Timed that well, but straight to the fielder. You know, we lost three wickets. The captain was in there. Yes, the pressure is there. Miscommunication, lack of understanding. Perhaps the pressure building up. Inability to get the boundaries, to rotate the strike. And then you're pushing yourself for a single when it's not there. That's softly played for another dot. Pressure piling up on Bangladesh. Another over. Goes by 87 for 6. Lana, Kil, uh, Lana King will continue. One for seven of her seven overs. Three maidens. And uh, she beautifully bowled. Shubana Mostari round her legs. It's been her day so far. In Bangladesh, they need 127 from the remaining overs, which is 20.5. Plenty of time left. Wickets only four. Australia going for the kill. Lana King has two slips now for her. Another sweep attempted, but another play and miss this time. Rabia Khan. It's been a tough ride for Bangladesh with the bat. If you talk about speed breakers, Lana King and Ellis Perry, they really put the brakes on the scoring. Oh, that was close. Missed the line completely there, Rabia Khan. Turned the face of the bat too early. Until the 40th over of the Australian batting innings, Bangladesh looked on par. Very competitive, but the last 10 overs, we saw a shift in momentum. And after that, it was all one-way traffic. Seven-time world champions and the defending champions, Australia, dominating the match. This was swept well, swept fine. Rabia will get some runs. A couple more picked up. It's Bangladesh inch towards the three-figure mark. There was signs of fight. Jyoti was patting. She tried to graft, stay in the wicket, but she actually was part of all the three runouts. The third one was herself. Once they look back, they'll definitely see, look into the basics even, how to drag your bat properly when you put in a dive, how to keep the bat landed on the ground. Those things have to be looked at. Another over done after 30, it's 89 for 6.
Sharnakhtar in the crease. She can bat. So does Rabia. Is it too much for them to take it to, to the finishing line? The first ball from Kim Garth right on the money. Well, uh, after 30 overs, Bangladesh, 89 for 6. Leave aside this delivery and right after 30, Australia women, they were uh, 94 for 5. So, uh, just 5 runs ahead, having lost 1 wicket less. But it's about the batting prowess as you go deeper into the batting order. Goes for the big one. S went straight up. Catch is an offer. As a good catch taken by Litchfield. It was uh, going away from her. She followed it. Kept her composure. And did the needful. And Shorna Akhtar, she has to depart. Another disappointing dismissal for Bangladesh, but that was inevitable. At some point, the batters had to break loose, and Sharna Akhtar, she's got a good punch about her, can hit some big shots, but this time round, absolutely mistimed that from Kim Garth. Garth among the wickets as well. So the middle order collapsing with time. Sean Akhtar, the latest casualty. It was a length delivery. Hit the deck hard. was full. Drivable length, but not timed well there. Nice catch taken in the end by Leachfield. It was in the offer. And she took it gleefully. Had to make a call. It was her catch. Bangladesh slowly but surely drifting away from the path to victory. New batter in, Kim Garth. Tails up. Solid defense shown by Nahid Akhtar, the vice captain. She had an excellent day with the ball. 2 for 27 for, from her 10. Still wasn't enough. And Australia in the end managed a formidable total. 213 big contribution in the end last 10 overs doing a lot of damage for Bangladesh it's, it's that just that moment brings you you know when you wonder oh ifs and buts you know Bangladesh were on top they managed to take a few wickets they could have Killed, killed it off in terms of uh, bowling Australia out early on at one stage it seemed you know it would be very difficult yes of course Australia top notch bad deep plenty of talent versatile at one stage you think you know it would be 170 160 would be difficult for them and then they cross 200 that's the mental of this side. Ranked number one in the ODI rankings. Ranked number one in the points table. That was nicely driven. Naid Akhtar. Ball still doesn't have the legs to reach the boundary ropes. Naid scampers for two in the meantime. As the over ends, 91 for seven. Good start to the over again. Alana King loving bowling here at the Mirpur wicket. A lot of turn on offer. Look at her economy. It's really been excellent stuff from her. Another drive. Doesn't get Rabia anything. Score 29 of the last over. She's bowled by Fahima. I think four sixes in that and that took the total to 213 
Nicely swept in the air. Ellis Perry, deep square leg, strong arms, throws it back. So only a single allowed. Now she's uh, in her ninth over as Ilana King. And imagine just giving away 10 runs of your 8.3. Yeah, that would be good news for Australia, definitely. Just watching that pre-match press conference that the Bangladesh skipper Nigar Sultana did yesterday coming to that point another dot played by Nahida she said the back foot game of the batters would be tested that was their anticipation they were expecting a lot of pace but actually the opposite happened spinners put a stranglehold led by Alana King and that prompts me to say, you know, you speak of conditions, turning pitches, slow pitches. It's also about the quality the side has. This is world cricket, international cricket and any other international sport it'd be. When you're speaking of being world class, you know, you got to perform almost anywhere. 32 done with Bangladesh, 92 for 7. Kim Garth continues looking for the cut. Rabia not in position, not much footwork. A required run rate now 6.7 plus. Current run rate somewhere around 3. Less than 3 now. The current run rate 2.87 to be precise. It's the wickets, it's, it's challenging the capabilities, the competencies and hence it makes me say uphill task, challenging task, tough, difficult, all those words but also the opportunity to rise to the occasion be the winner, be the match winner, you've got nothing to lose from here yes you're the home side but you're already your back is pinned oh brilliant delivery from Kim Garth it's full skid on and uh, Rabia was in no position, neither forward, neither back, standing deep in, his, in her crease and with a planted foot, just uh, trying to flick the ball and missed everything, went on to hit the stumps as Bangladesh lose their eighth, Kim Garth gets her second. Rabia gone for 5 of 19 clean bold by Kim Garth she gets her second tactics from Australia have worked Elisa Healy behind the wicket stood up did not let Rabia get out of the crease in any way she got stuck she was in no man's land ball skidded through the defense Hits middle stump. That is bullseye bowling from Kim Garth. I think it's also worth mentioning that innings from Annabelle Sutherland. You know, because before that, quite a few of the batters got starts. Elisa Healy, 24 of 39. Beth Mooney, 25 of 64, all of them veterans, senior players. Ashley Gardner, 32 of 38. Then came Annabel Sutherland, 58 of just 76. That partnership with her and Ilana King. Yes, Ilana King scored in quick time, particularly that last over and the ball in hand also. But often what happens is at times we you know the other partner outshines the other one <laughs> that's what happened but 
the partnership was the game changer, the momentum changer in this game. Despite the fact that Australia have bowled 23 extras in total, they're still in the driver's seat to clinch the first of the three match ODI series here at Mirpur. After a short drinks break, we're back into action. It's up to the tail now. Can the tail wag? That is the big question here. Nahid Akhtar still in the crease. Two from seven. Sultan Akhatu and Maruf Akhtar to follow. We've seen Maruf Akhtar practicing her sweeps yesterday during practice, but how far can she go when she comes into the crease if she's needed? Well left there. Trying to survive, Sultana Khatun, the new batter. Had a good day with the ball. Picked up a couple of wickets. Took out the big guns of the Australian top order. But after that, the Australians came back and came back strong. Kim Garth, she's got some pace, but Alyssa Hilly, the skillful keeper that she is, standing up and look at that take. Brilliant behind the wicket, Alyssa Hilly. Judging the bounce. Absolutely on top Australia right now. As we have a slight change in the com box. I'm being joined by Shanu Rabbani. Thank you so much ABP. And at this moment, Australia edging closer towards a massive victory in the first one international match. This over ends being another wicket maiden, Kim Garth continues her good work. Bangladesh, 92 for 8 after 33. You look at the batting card, not much to talk about apart from that 27 from 64 by the captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti but then the way she got out really summed up Bangladesh's batting performance today to a rather amateur run out and Alana King she's into her final over <laughs> giving away around one run per over some extraordinary bowling figures 11 for 1 from 9.1 overs Brilliant job, and, and she's really enjoying bowling in this wicket. The Australian spinners would enjoy it, and the new. Gardner did not have a good day, but the two leggies really did. Alana being one of them. Slight misfield, unlike the Australian setup, but it gives the chance for Bangladesh to pick up another single, that coming from the bat of Sultana. So both the batters off the mark, but where are they going to go? That's a big question here. Perhaps uh, biding time and trying to get some form, especially for Nai Akhtar who can bat a bit. Another delivery she faces. Another dot ball. Current run rate, it's now come down under 3. Required is 7.27. So you can tell this was a pitch where 150 even would have been a competitive total. Drive to mid-wicket. Still can't find the gap. Another dot from Elena. After her heroics with the bat, she came back, bowled exceptionally well. Oh, very close to being cotton bowled, Alana King. Just out of her reach, Nahid Akhtar survives on this occasion. Just one delivery left. Nahida on 3 from 11. Bangladesh struggling. Alana with the last ball of her spell. That goes down for a dot. What a brilliant spell she had. 10 overs. A wicket for just 12 runs. Bangladesh struggling after 34. 94 for 8.
<laughs> She's got the player of the match award written on her back almost. <laughs> and we're talking about Alana King. She's been an absolute king with bat and with ball as well. As Australia look to wrap things up. 16 overs remain in this match. I don't think they'll require all 16. Megan shoot back into the attack with a slip in place. Sultana on strike plays it on the offside. There is a fielder at point. A dot ball to begin proceedings. Shanur, this is the ICC Women's Championship uh, that's going on. All these matches will have implications on the points table. Australia already raking up a lot of points. They're already on top. This was a series that these girls would have thought could be challenging, but so far they've really expressed themselves, adjusted to situations very well, and have shown why they're ranked number one in the world. But for Bangladesh, on the other hand, the World Championship gives them an opportunity to face the better and the bigger teams in women's cricket. They faced India and Pakistan last year. They faced South Africa as well. That was an important away series for them, picking up their first ever victory over South Africa in their soil in one-day format, also in the T20 format. So this is a learning experience, a learning curve for Bangladesh. And the more time Sultana and Nahida spends in the wicket facing the best of the best, I think this will give them a very good learning experience, although in a very hard way. Megan should continue three dot balls in a row. This time again to the fielder. But they do take the single. Quick running between the wickets. On this occasion, good running for a change. That's been an area, if you're talking about experience, that's been an area where Bangladesh have been lacking today. Three runouts, and there could have been more. 95 for 8, and yes, like you said, the ODI Championship gives teams like Bangladesh an opportunity to face the best of the best and it gives Australia an opportunity to come here and play because the World Cup, the Women's World Cup is here in Bangladesh later this year. Another dot ball. Yeah, it's an important experience for both sides so it's all to gain although this match Bangladesh, especially the batting unit has not been able to put up a lot of fight especially after the top four were gone shoot gets another dot to end the over it's 95 for 8 15 overs left and we can see australia megan shoot kim garth ashley gardner georgia wareham alana king and elise perry they've been the six bowlers that have been used They've got more options, but the captain, Elisa Healy, so far has decided to stick with six. Some of those economy rates, especially <laughs> the one by Alana King, very, very impressive. And Ash Gardner, she's going to bowl her fifth over. One for 22 from her first four. Bangladesh, 95 for eight. And you were talking about the championship, the Oriya championship, uh, being an opportunity for all these teams. And it's great for the women's game as well. Bangladesh, yesterday in the press conference, they were talking about how much they learned from these Australian players. And uh, Australia's captain also echoed a very similar sentiment, saying that these conditions would help them learn about the World Cup this year and also about the Bangladesh players. And I think the Bangladesh bowlers, they've uh, lived up to their billing and their promise of being a very good spin attack. As uh, Ashley Gardner, she begins and wow, what a delivery. Almost, almost at the wicket of Sultana Khatun. That was very nice from Gardner. She's trying out her variations now. Australians, they do have the liberty of experimenting, trying some variations, preparing themselves for the remainder of the series. Another dot ball. Ash Gardner 
giving the ball some air, trying to get it to grip and turn. Sultana Khatun, she's been there for 10 deliveries, just two runs as Gardner continues. Oh, now that one spun. There is an appeal, but the umpire perhaps deems it to be a bit too high. The on-field umpire Ghazi Sohel answers the query of Gardner there. Ash Gardner was a tad expensive in her first spell. Bangladesh top order getting a hangover off spin, but coming back now, bowling to the tail, finding things much easier. This time she goes big, a one-handed hoik. Is there a fielder there? She is there. And a catch taken safely, Ellis Perry. Safe hands. Another wicket falls for Bangladesh. Sultana Khatun has to go. There was just one fielder in the deep, Ellis Perry. It was an easy catch for her. So the Bangladesh innings falling apart. We're 95 for 9 now. Just one wicket in hand. Marufa, the next batter in. What promised to be a competitive match when Bangladesh bowled has gradually turned into an absolute Aussie domination. Ashley Gardner gets her second as we look at the catch from Ellis Perry. Fresh off the WPL victory with Royal Challengers Bangalore. She was talking about the workload that the women have to take nowadays. It's more or less playing cricket 12 months a year. So it's cricket all around the world. But they seem to enjoy it. They're enjoying themselves right now. It's good exposure for the women's game, obviously. And uh, both captains yesterday, they spoke about the need for growing this game making it more popular among people and there was plenty of and there still is plenty of media attention from local media outlets as far as this series is concerned given how awesome to simply put the australian side are and uh, what they've achieved in world cricket so far so there's a lot of mystique aura and greatness about this outfield and uh, th this outfit so more and more people will be attracted towards this game. And as I say it, the umpire raises his finger. Ash Gardner has the final wicket. And that's the match for Australia. They've won handsomely. Ash Gardner finishing the job in this over. And really a thoroughly well-deserved victory for Australia who take a 1-0 lead winning by 118 runs in this first of three ODIs all of these matches will be played here at the home of cricket in Bangladesh Mirpur's Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium Australia finishes off in style Ash Gardner picking up her third Marufa was just trapped right in front Skiddy delivery within the stumps caught the tail ender and Bangladesh middle and late middle order exposed the three runouts definitely did not help but you also have to appreciate the kind of fielding that the Australians did the number of direct hits that came in the discipline with which the bowlers bowled did not take a lot of time to adjust to conditions and this is what a world-class team does the two teams walk towards the dressing room we're preparing for the presentation as well Looking at the final scorecard of the Bangladesh batting, they could just play out 36 overs. 
The big contribution coming from Extras, 23 from Australia. They'll definitely not be happy with that, but Fresno Hawk Pinky, the only centurion for Bangladesh in Odia history, got out for not just the three double digit scores. Subhana Mostari, 17, Murshida Khatun, 10, and Captain Nigar Sultana crafting her way into 27 from 64, but the rest were just in a procession of coming and going in and out of the wicket. And in the end, the dominant Australians wrap Bangladesh up for 95. A very nice looking bowling card for Australia. Three wickets for Gardner who came in the end and wrapped the tail up. But it was Elena King. Three maidens. One for 12. Another brilliant performance from the leggy. Kim Garth, Megan Shute had a good day out. Wickets shared between them. Alice Perry, although not picking up a wicket, she still was very economical. Match summary, Australia women's 213 for 7. Annabel scoring 58, not out. And Elena King with a handy 48 of just 31. 30. 2 and 25 from Gardner and Mooney as well for Bangladesh Sultana Khatun and Nahid Akhtar picked up 2 in response Bangladesh just played 36 overs 95 all out a dominating win by Australia by 118 runs post match presentation coming soon
Halo, cek. Halo. Halo.
welcome to the post match presentation uh, of the australian women's tour of bangladesh and we kick started the tour uh, with the first odi where the australian women have won the match by 118 runs a massive margin congratulations uh, to the aussies and commiserations to the home side bangladesh may we have a big round of applause uh, for the touring australian side i'd like to uh, introduce the presentation party starting from my left side uh, Rizamuddin Chaudhary, Chief Executive Officer of the Bangladesh Cricket Board. Next to him, Mr. Nazim Ahmed, Director BCB and Vice Chairman, Women's Wing Committee of BCB. And finally, Habibul Vasha Shuman, former Captain of the Bangladesh National Cricket Team and Head of Women's Wing BCB. In elite company, well, first and foremost, I would like to invite the Bangladesh Captain, Nikar Sultara Jyoti, to come and have a few words. Jyoti, uh, well, tough luck. You won the toss, you opted to field, and the bowlers gave you a good start. Where do you think it went wrong? Uh, yeah, what you said, like we, we had a very good start. How our bowlers actually starting, it was amazing. And uh, I think we got five wickets so early, and after that, somehow our bowlers couldn't uh, bowl in the right areas. Yeah. And uh, you would have liked to restrict them to somewhere around 150, 170. below 220 and I think it was uh, a disaster in the batting because we got three run outs. When you have three run outs in a game, then you can get Like of partnership, definitely, and we need to be more responsible for the batting next time. Yeah. And, and what would aspect also, you know? I think we should be hanging there because the uh, wicket was very little bit turning and uh, uh, whoever get their start should go for. And do you think the lack of boundaries, the runouts, those things came up? So obviously, so many negative things happen in the batting unit. So I think we need to work on it and uh, we are looking forward to the second game. You've done it in the past. Hope you, you turn it around. All the best. Thank you. The Bangladesh captain, Nigar Sultana. Now, uh, about the player of the match, we had quite a few performers. Uh, but one of them definitely, definitely stood out for her performance with the bat in hand and also her performance with the ball later on. She scored a magnificent, in fact, blistering 46 of 31, hit five sixes, two fours. It's Alana King and also got a wicket with the ball in hand, is the player of the match of the first ODI, Alana King. Continue to fight their way back into the game. 
well, two out of two, so 100% in terms of that. But, but what's your takeaway from the batting? And, uh, of course, uh, your players showed character later on. Yeah, I think it's probably just a little bit about patience and, and um, probably fine-tuning some of our plans against the turning ball. Obviously, we've got a great spin attack as well, so we always knew we were in the game in that department. But um, probably as a batting side, we, we probably look at a few things that we can do a little bit differently. But um, at the end of the day, 220 was a really competitive total, so we were happy with it. 220 certainly seemed to be one. Uh, bowlers up front, some swing, and the spinners that enjoyed a lot later on. Uh, and what was the order? Uh, we've got such variety with our attack. We're blessed with a really good pace attack. Um, obviously, they enjoyed the conditions, but the paces actually took bulk of the wickets today. So, um, yeah, we'll just look at uh, where we can prove in that. Off goes Marufa. Nicely driven, finds the gap right away. Australia off the mark. Pull shot. And we'll get the first boundary. In, uh, India, picking up four wickets last year, really became a big star for Bangladesh. Oh, that was an opportunity. Just not able to take that catch. Second over from Sultana, the off spinner, right away, gets some turn. Oh, is that a wicket? Wow. First stop, first ball, Litchfield's gone. From the good length, there was a bit of turn and couldn't negotiate it properly. Litchfield, she is destructive. This is really important wicket for Bangladesh. It will motivate the team. They are happy, Litchfield. So they also have to make the maximum of this home series as well. Pull shot. And we'll get the first boundary. Alisa Healy definitely knows how to play on the back foot. Once again, outside, outside edge. edge. That should be out. Finger goes up. Another wicket for Bangladesh. That is really excellent. Excellent delivery. Second wicket down. Ellis Perry gone. A big, big blow for Australia. And what a bowling effort from Sultana right away with the new ball. The persistence from Jyoti to keep the slip on worked out beautifully. Well, it's very, I'm sure, 
wanted to have a longer stay at the crease. This is a long series, three ODIs followed by the 3T20s, but she has disappointed right at the top. And that was a superb delivery for Litchfield. Bit of short delivery, back foot pull, nicely punched, and it's a boundary. And there is that one fielder. Oh, now that's an appeal, and she's given massive wicket for Bangladesh. It's the big fish, the Australian captain, Elisa Healy. She has to depart. She took the outside edge, and she's gone for 24 from 39 deliveries. Marufa, we were talking about her being a bit unlucky, and she gets the important breakthrough. She's looking for those chances, Nahida. Bounce came straight in, and the finger goes up. Brilliant from Nahida. First from the comp box and then the umpire. It was really plumb and uh, didn't take that much time, umpire. And that was a very clean leg before. Another breakthrough for, for Team Bangladesh. This is 48 for 4, partnership breaks. Ah, down the leg. There was turn and it's a wide delivery. <laughs> First extra of the day. Australia moving. Fahima with the wrong on. They're excited. Given is the big wicket of Beth Mooney. Just brushed the bat on the way. And she's gotten the breakthrough. She goes for 25 as Bangladesh celebrate. That happens from the bowling of Fahima. Again, tossed up. The batter not sure whether to really come onto the front foot or not. Mooney, she was set 25 from 64 deliveries. It's a game of matchups. Sultana turning the ball in towards. Oh, that's gone! Square leg umpire raises his finger. Neither celebrates. Yet another one bites the dust for Australia. The sixth wicket is gone. Ashley Gardner goes off for a well played 32, but neither gets her second. Khan, just look at the action. She came, she left the crease, and she thought she will get the ball into the slot, but it turned a lot than she expected. Beat by the turn. A yes. nice job done by the captain behind the stumps. That was, it was big. It was big for Bangladesh. And one of the most dangerous batters in this Australian side playing in the middle, late middle order, Ashley Gardner. In the bag. There's no space for... Goal! Yes! The slip is rewarded. Outside edge. Shorna gets the break to a brilliant catch by Nahida. I think it was Rabia in fact. Yes. Rabia takes a stunner in the slip cotton. And Georgia Wareham, she departs. They finally broken the partnership. This was looking dangerous for Bangladesh and the Tigresses. They fought back once again. Chris Midoff, two patrolling the covers within the 30-yard circle. That was outside edge and was a chance for Bangladesh. Missed it. Chasing it. Saved the boundary. But there was absolutely a clear chance for Bangladesh. Brilliant delivery once again. Beating Healy outside the off stump. And that's why you would want to keep a slip. Sultana can keep the ball both ways. Beating Healy all ends up other spinners stands her ground a solid base and a solid hit out of the park mighty blow from her that was flighted but she waited for the ball to bounce in and rocked into her back foot the connection was pure she made oh what a shot that is will it go again this time bigger it's another six has to be more clever. Struggling right now, Faima. Again, this time she employs the slog sweep. Finds the gap again. Two fielders there. Just couldn't get it. Another boundary. Lana King. Her highest ODI score. If you look at the length. She really connects well again. But two fielders there. They should have stopped that. Waited for each other to take charge. But none took charge in the end the ball just went through them the last over 
yielding four sixes all coming off the bat of Alana King desperate dive desperate jump from Naida ball skips her fingers goes all the way and after 50 it's 213 for seven Australia Australians giving away their tactics in a way field that has been set shoot going for the in swinger this time gets the outside edge the first wicket for Australia an outside edge well taken behind the stumps by skipper Lisa Healy Farzana Hawks stay in the crease is done and Megan Shook strikes in the very first over and gets rid of Farzana Hawk Pinky the sole centurion in the Bangladesh side and she's gone for naught without troubling the scorers it's not the start Bangladesh would have hoped for and exactly what Australia wanted just a start for Bangladesh from Kim Garth and is definitely bringing the slip into play This time driven well, finds the gap, the ball's racing through the carpet and Murshida finds her second boundary. As they say, patience is virtue. Given the opportunity in the previous over and Kim Gart slightly errs in length, slightly over pitches and Murshida Khatun leans onto it with flamboyance, crisp shot to get her first boundary. The ball is getting away, moving away, out swinging from the right handed batter, so the angle's not there. Till now, Mustari, she's been holding it off. See what goes off in the next ball. That's driven, finally, back to ball. Is there a fielder? There's no one patrolling the third man region. An outside edge goes off to the boundary. This is boundary number three for Bangladesh. Yeah, tad bit fuller. Tad bit fuller from Garth. Open the face of the bat, but outside edge makes takes it away from Gully. But I'd give Shubhana slight bit of credit for that, for opening the face of the bat at the very last moment, which made that angle and kept it away from the fielder at Gully. If you think that will be happen to you also, and the lower order, what Shomano and Ahmed bin Parvez were talking about, oh my goodness, whenever I was talking about staying on the wicket, staying about resilience showing about the resilience that time she departs we get down bangladesh will win trouble you can maximize you can score big but murshida departs now this is the time for the captain to come and to take the responsibility nonetheless at this moment with the cloud cover on it is difficult for batting now a big shot comes out finally pressure release nigar sultana jyoti gets her first boundary very well played slot sweep there against Ash Gardner. And she's off the mark. As we can see, it was flighted. And Jyoti was very happy to see that go all the way to the boundary. There is a big gap behind Square. And that's where she wanted to go. But the ball goes and crashes onto the stumps instead. Subhana Mostari, right after the drinks break, has to depart. And Alaina King gets her wicket. Right on cue. Just said it. As cliched as it sounds, that a partnership has been broken. And I did say that Bangladesh would hope not, but they've managed to take the wicket of Subhana Mostari. Round the legs. Wrapped around the legs. Full delivery flight. She was down on one knee, looking to sweep it. But in the process, leg left a tad bit of the leg stump exposed. And Lana King just made the most of that and hit the leg stump bullseye. Breaks the partnership on 49. That is a proper leg spinner's wicket. It's been bowling length so far. Oh, that's right on the money. Big appeal. The umpire unmoved on that occasion. The on field umpire Vrindarathi from India was not interested. I think, uh, just have a feeling it was closer than it looked. 
bit of movement, but extra bounce is the extra bounce, even though it was the back foot, is the extra bounce that. That was a slower one. Change of face. Is there an opportunity? Oh my goodness. A comedy of errors amplified by that direct hit. And another wicket falls for Bangladesh. This was unfortunate, but the mix up resulted in a run out. Just what Bangladesh did not need at this moment. Fahima Khatun has to go. That was a slower one. She played a nice drive, but look at that effort there. Brilliant fielding. Shied the middle stump. Caught the bullseye. No chance for the batter to come back. Jyoti did not respond to the call in the first place. It was too risky. There wasn't a single in the first place. Fahima had to pay. Another wicket gone for Bangladesh. She's getting it to move off the surface. She's banging it in and looking for something. Once again, a fuller delivery. And now, does the umpire budge? He goes upstairs to the third umpire. They think they've got the big wicket of Nigar Sultana Jyoti. Let's see. What does she do on her second spell? Again, played on the onside. A quick single taken. There was a fielder there. Shit. Shit. What happened? What happened? There is an appeal for the run out. Yeah, and I was just about to mention that I thought it was good running initially. Oh my goodness, she did not plant her bat. And the foot probably isn't down on time as we can see the stumps being broken. Yes, you can say it. Another wicket down and this time this is the captain of Bangladesh, Nigar Sultana Jyoti. That was really lazy effort. You cannot do it. About the batting prowess as you go deeper into the batting order. Goes for the big one. Went straight up. Catch is an offer. It's a good catch taken by Litchfield. It was uh, going away from her. She followed it. Kept her composure. And did the needful. And Shorna Akhtar, she has to depart. Be the winner. Be the match winner. You've got nothing to lose from here. Yes, you're the home side, but you're already... Your back is pinned. Oh, brilliant delivery from Kim Garth. It was full skid on. And uh, Rabia was in no position. Neither forward, neither back. Behind the wicket. Stood up. Did not let Rabia get out of the crease in any way. She got stuck. She was in no man's land. Ball skidded through the defense. Hits middle stump. That is bullseye bowling from Kim Garth. More and more people will be attracted towards this game. And as I say it, the umpire raises his finger. Ash Gardner has the final wicket. And that's the match. And really, a thoroughly well-deserved victory for Australia, who take a 1-0 lead winning by 118 runs.